Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. I don't believe it's possible for Tony to look much less like Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, he's got. What's the deal with that? He's got uh, oh, a, a, a little bit of Josh Brolin in him and a hint of mariachi. There's a hint. There's an undercurrent of Mexican in there somewhere, <laughs> but it's not. It's not Jerry Seinfeld. I heard I was Dennis playing Jerry Seinfeld from Always Sunny. That's what the derivative is okay well jerry seinfeld it is not you can wander the earth in fact your punishment today at some point should be to wander the streets and say who am i and see if anyone in miami correctly guesses that you're meant to look like jerry <laughs> seinfeld because your mustache i think is undoing the entirety of the thing jerry seinfeld you can't imagine him with a mustache Happy Greg Cody Tuesday to everyone. Uh, somebody writes in, take anything on the show, add more Greg Cody, and I'm in. Well, you'll be happy there with today's go. show. Yes. So you got my email. <laughs> we got a pop-off with Greg Cody. He is now calling him, what are you calling yourself as a nickname? The Corn King? The Corn King. Oh, boy. Works on several levels. <laughs> uh, put it on the poll, please, at Levitard Show. Uh, can you ever be someone who makes the greatest popcorn when you're using the microwave. Whoa, shots fired. <laughs> that is the best way to make uh, popcorn. You know, the old-timey skillets. Who does that? I, I haven't used a skillet for popcorn since uh, my dorm room at FAU in 1978. <laughs> Jiffy Pop. It's not a skillet. It's going to be uh, abuelas cazuela. Okay. It's going to be. It's. I don't know exactly. where. You're, what are you coming up with a, a skillet from? A you skillet. Know. Yeah. Like a shake and bake is what he's saying, right? right. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. The the methodology. How did your elaboration make me understand less what he was talking about? <laughs> like, how did your clarification on skillet, like a shake and bake? I don't know what you guys are well, talking shake about. Shake and bake was like it was it was prepared in a skillet like uh, thing, wasn't it? Like a tin, like a little. Wasn't it? No, no, no. Are you thinking no. of Jiffy Pop? Maybe I am. He's I have not, no idea. It, shake and bake is not popcorn. Uh, now that was like mean, chicken. Yeah. The delicious chicken. You're talking uh. about the popcorn that Drew Barrymore was uh, setting up at the start of Scream. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But it's not yes. here for you. But it's Thank not you. shake and bake. Not, uh, it is no, absolutely it not shake and bake. Oh, but okay. I was trying to piece together but you know what, what I'm whatever. talking about. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Barely. I got there. I do like that. I do like the concept of baked popcorn. That would be interesting to try. Just for, for the audience, so that it can truly experience what my Tuesdays are, are like, a skillet would be damn near impossible to make popcorn in. It would just pop all over the room. A skillet, I don't believe, has a top. And then Stugatz's helpful correction was how to bake chicken. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what we're dealing with. I mean, skillet's kind of close to a cazuela. It's it's, it's derivative. Not. Okay, I, I have it, made. It's, it's closer to a wok than it is a skillet. But mm -hmm. I can see how someone would call it a skillet. I don't know how someone would call it a shake and bake. But here we are. <laughs> I have made popcorn in a skillet. Okay, it's not impossible. What you do is you cover the skillet with um, tin foil, and then poke a hole in the tin foil to let steam out. Why aren't you doing it that way instead of the microwave? Because it's today? labor intensive. The, but, the, don't you want to win? I, I intend to win. <laughs> we'll win. The methodology is not important. What's important is the type of popcorn you use, and I use the Cadillac, uh, and and then the ingredients, and and you know making sure you don't burn the popcorn, which you can do in a microwave if it's ten seconds too long. Don't shame Greg Cody. It's not like we got the Top Chef set out there. We we got a hot plate. <laughs> Today I want you to call me Greg Corny. That's going to be my name. We today. do. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> if, that, long corn if, cane. If, if that is not if that is not Greg Cody's just general late life career for him to say, you know what, he doing it best, wheeze. doing it best is is labor intensive. <laughs> Why would I want to do anything ever that's labor intensive? The, the point is, it's like too much effort for no uh, gain back. You know what I mean? Like I can I can paint my wall with a, a small one inch wide brush if I want to, but I would rather use a roller and get it done more efficiently and quicker. You know, so it, we're not in a race here. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you taking longer to make your popcorn doesn't gain you any points. <laughs> that kind of thing. Dan thinks yeah. the longer it takes, the better the popcorn. I know. I know. It's Some, weird. Yeah, right. somebody told him that, right. and he believed it. <laughs> low, and, <laughs> low and slow. I would generally say that the most fulfilling things, the things that feel most fulfilling, tend to be difficult, tend to be labor-intensive. Okay. That's, what the, that's what the reward of fulfillment is. Not sex. Well, if you're at all interested in someone other than yourself, then yes, sex as well. Seven if, if, seconds, if, boom. If you're only <laughs> interested in yourself and being Rick Pitino in a restaurant, then yes. But if you're interested in uh, anyone else other than yourself, uh, and I have no proof that anyone in this room ever thinks of anyone other than themselves. Huh. Including uh, you, huh? Uh, I have no proof that anyone <laughs> in this room thinks of anyone other than themselves. But you cannot, Stugatz, for a section, a second, accuse me of thinking more of myself than you think of yourself. Like you can't accuse anyone of that. You are. Uh, That's totally fair. We, we Thank can, you, by the way. We could yeah. have a Guinness World Book uh, record record holder person come through here and judge however those things are judged. And I don't. I think this would be per square foot on the globe. I have more narcissism per square foot on the globe than any place in sports media. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tony wants to, after seeing Amin's jump shot yesterday, uh, Tony wants to have some sort of uh, sports media scouting combine. Dan, I was made incredibly sad. I was made sad, and I was telling Mike uh, before the show started, I was made very sad when I saw Amin's jumper. Amin is like a brother to me. I love Amin. We've done a bunch of great stuff together. Um, when I saw that jumper, I was like, wow, okay, we need to reevaluate what we're doing here. I think Amin's basketball takes are great, but when you have a jumper like that, it puts into question a lot of the things that are happening. I think on social media, there's a lot of people saying, hey, look, how can we take Amin seriously when he's got a jumper that looks like he shoots with his off hand? You've never had one get away from you? Come not, on, man. Not like that. A small I can, sample we're looking no, at. No, not like that. No, it's not, it's not the miss. The miss is not Everybody all concerning. Misses. He hadn't played basketball in a while. You're calibrating. That's fine. The form. Oh, that was heartbreaking to watch. It made me sad. So I, I thought to myself, you know what? I don't want to be that guy, but I think we need to put some sort of limit and some sort of test together, right? You remember the presidential thing in, in elementary school where you had to make the presidential list? You could do like yeah. six pull-ups. Yeah. You could touch your toes. Yeah, there was you could red run a mile. and blue patches. Yeah. Right. Arnold Schwarzenegger's thing. Exactly. Yeah. I think we need to do something like that for sports media, where if your jumper looks a certain way, you can't really talk about people in the NBA. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was in a group chat, and everybody was talking about Anthony Edwards' dunk last night, and he chimed in with an opinion saying, that's not a dunk. And honestly, inter- I internalized that. Like, why would I listen to this person? <laughs> it means less. I, yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't find you credible anymore. You're, I mean, it, it wasn't a, a dunk. Joke. It wasn't a dunk. It I, was a throw-in. I didn't even care enough to tell him that I didn't care about his opinion. That's how bad his shot was. Mm. A lot of guys talking about quarterbacks, and they can't win in the big time, and they're doing this. This wrong and they can't throw 25 yards in a spiral like we need to put together all the people that talk about sports line them up wow. let's see you do certain things i want to see you shoot a 25 foot jumper i want to see you throw a 25 yard out pattern let's start making people let, let's see who's who in the sports media also world. it was a dunk he cut his hand on the rim it's a dunk can we start uh i've got a number of things here can we start before we do the scouting combine for sports media people how well do you think this group do you think anyone here would pass even the sixth grade presidential challenge i'm gonna like, look up exactly what it is let's because i think yeah. it's a lot of pull-ups yeah and I pull-ups did back and, in the day pull-ups have never been a strength for me uh, <laughs> I, I uh i think that that would be hard for our for our group i mean i i also want to ask the the, the audience at lebitard show did Amin devalue his takes with that one jump shot? Because Amin also says that that Anthony Edwards shot last night was not a dunk. He's calling it an aggressive floater. 
<laughs> an aggressive floater because he <laughs> says you got to hit your hand on the rim, but he did dislocate his finger. I happen to agree with Amin on that. You have to put hand on rim for it to be a dunk. Otherwise, you're throwing but what it did, down. What did he, he dislocate waited. his finger well, on? Wasn't it the rim? The you're bounce like back of the ball is where he dislocated his finger. So if you watch him dunk it, the ball goes through the rim, and then it comes back and then hits him in the hand. So it's actually on the throw-in. He keeps his hand out. The ball hits him, and then that's where he, he dislocates I, it. I, he's saying that he threw it through the cylinder before his hand made contact with the rim. Therefore, it's not a dunk. It looks like a dunk to me. Matter of fact, it looks like the greatest dunk to me. <laughs> uh, it's either. This is a big, wide gulf here on sports debate. Is it? Was it? All right, put it on the poll at Levitard Show. Was it the greatest drunk dunk ever, or was it just an aggressive floater? Because there's a big, there is a big, greatest dunk ever, there, or not there, a dunk. There's a there's a big gap there between the two things. Poor John Collins, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you think what him. happened to Collins is bad, wait till you saw what happened to Austin Reeves. Uh, we're going to get to that sound in a second, but I, I just want to ask the group here at the risk of being prisoner of the moment. Anthony Edwards is not even 6'5", right? I understand the Dwayne Wade comparisons because at that height, I don't think I have ever seen a player who jumps like that. Uh, he hit his head on the backboard the other day blocking a shot to end the game. He's the reason the Timberwolves are going to be great for a long time. Uh, the way that he gets up, even Mike Conley, who's got you know nearly 20 years in the league, is saying he jumps kind of like a cat where he keeps going up and then somehow lands on one foot and doesn't hurt himself. I just don't think I've, any, I've seen anyone that size get that generally high when when jumping he's listed as 6'4 and you're right about Conley because he's seen everyone dunk everyone in the history of the NBA so he would know he's an expert but he's listed as 6'4 John Morant is the guy that comes to mind yeah small guy who jumps very yeah. very yeah, high John Morant yeah. is even smaller and slighter uh but I haven't seen John Morant hit his head on a rim blocking a you know making a shot well, we haven't seen <laughs> John Morant period that's in a right while. Yes. <laughs> did you know that Mike Conley uh Jr. never had a technical foul yeah we we did that as a stat of the day a couple yeah, of weeks but, ago. Uh, 17 years, no technical. Still blown away. He had one rescinded back in 2014. Incredible. You guys do a good show if you already mentioned that. <laughs> I've got the uh, six different exercises for the Presidential Fitness Challenge. Let's go. Uh, we've got sit-ups. We've got a shuttle run. We've got the V-sit reach. What? We've oh, yeah. got one-mile run pull-ups, and a right-angle push-up. But what is the time and number? Because the, the run was under eight minutes, under seven minutes, under nine so minutes? So if we're doing it at the closest age to, like, the exit, which is 17, like, that's the cutoff for, for the presidential challenge, a six-minute mile, 606 ah! is what you need to run. Jesus! You need what? to do 53... Wait, I can I can get there, but it'll Hold on, I'm going I'm to go the whole way down. So sit-ups, you need to do 55 consecutive sit-ups. Wow. You need to do an 8.7 shuttle run. You need to do a seven-inch... A sit reach. You need to do a six minute mile, 13 pull ups, and 53 consecutive I can, I can see your face right now. I'm not doing this. No, but you can't do no, a I'm six not, minute mile. You're no, wrong. Don't, yeah, you okay. Can't. You're not going to shame me. I, no, no, I'm, I'm flatly not doing it. Nobody any of this. say they can do all of those yes. things. No, nobody nobody, nobody yeah. volunteer that you can do this. Dan will there try to kill you on the air. There is no one here who can run a six minute mile. There's no one here who I can disagree. do that. I disagree. I disagree. I think of all of those events, uh, the the six minute mile and I believe it was six oh six. I need those extra yeah. six seconds. I believe that sounded like the most doable of all. To be honest, with you. <laughs> really, no, I, yeah. I honestly think I could do most of these, but the V sit, no shot. No shot. I think you guys are underestimating. If you have not done any running recently, how difficult it would be for you to six run minute a mile. Six <laughs> minutes. Just to run a mile. Six it's right. only a mile. That's if you do 20. Greg, Greg, we will not ask you to do no, it just because that. I would fear for your health running in those boat shoes of yeah, yours. That's all I brought, or else I would. If I had my snakes, I'd volunteer you to do it You right couldn't do now. under 11 minutes. Have a cardiologist running in step with me. You couldn't do a mile without stopping. <laughs> I think I could. If I do 13 no, pull-ups, a hernia will pop out. <laughs> Greg, how is it that you're this delusional? I thought that I had the world record holder for delusion on my left. How oh, thank is it you. that How is it that you don't understand that you're 70 you're near 70 okay, years uh, old? Uh, I have an athletic bone in my body. A okay. single one. <laughs> That's right, just one. Um It's funny though. For example, when when Tony was talking, uh I had a silky J back in the day. <laughs> right. I mean, I I'm sure you did. I could make a jump shot back in the day when I played a lot of hoops. So I could go on a court right now 
and I might not, I wouldn't be as good. Greg, at, I'm more Greg, of a set shot now Greg, than a jump shot. That day was the 1920s. No, uh, you know, put me on a court right now. And and I will out Amin Amin in I, terms of, wow. of my my form my that's, style. I'm well, with Greg. Hard, I'm with Greg Corney on this one. The yeah, Celtics won about 17 titles playing those types of dudes. There you go. <laughs> that's right. Better than Amin means because uh, you have to understand that Amin looked like he was having something between a seizure and an epileptic fit with what was happening. Just his hand was. Well, like, it's Ramadan, Dan. Uh, that's right. He hadn't eaten anything, and that was because he'd been fasting. Um, but uh, what happened with Amin was seizure adjacent on the hand. It, it felt a little seizure So wow. for you to say that you would have been better than Amin El Hassan uh, and his demon, his sprawling, gnarled demon hands uh, is not saying much. All I'm saying is that if you watch me take a jump shot, after a little bit of a warm-up, in fairness, after you watch me take a jump shot, you nod like a bobblehead and you say to yourself, that's a guy who's played. Back in the day when he was younger, that's a guy who would not be the last draft pick uh, in a pickup game. So, Gotch, yesterday I had some people come after me because a couple of my takes. Uh, one of them, I was making fun of Zach Eady and just uh, also basketball in general by saying that Zach Eady in 1984 would have been drafted before Michael Jordan. <laughs> and <laughs> he is. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he is great. Great. Well, I well, like this take. No, but Purdue fans <laughs> are so mad at me for. They're finally good at something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, way to go, Shannon Sharp, taking all number one seeds in both tournaments. Uh, <laughs> but but Purdue is is good at basketball, and they're good at basketball because this guy is bigger and stronger than everyone else. Gets fouled, and it's just it's He's not, certainly not faster than anyone else. It, it, it's unesthetically pleasing, and it's unathletically pleasing. Yeah, because, he's not he's not going to make it to the pros because he's not fleet of foot, but he's a really good college player, a, a tremendous inside presence with a, a tremendous size advantage. I know, but what I don't like watching is him plant himself in the in the key and then just throw it like he's four feet oh, from I love the that. basket oh, and I love just it. let I love no that one with him. Do. Where I don't like it is with Wembenyama yeah. because I can see, oh, this guy's a giant, oh, but he, he, can't, he can't move. So, yeah, you go do your thing because that's usually how big men <laughs> do it. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll dominate a six-foot-four center. But, uh, yeah, and the Wembenyama is a totally different animal. Why are you bringing up Wembenyama? Because Why normally, not? because I know I'm exposing a hypocrisy where I'm, like, all about this big stiff. Where I, I'm, like, with, with Wembenyama, I'm, like, he's way too tall. And he is way too tall. No, but Wembenyama is also not physically stiff the that's way where, that That's Edie why is. it's unfair. That's why it's unfair. See, make him like Zach Eady, and we're good. Okay, so make them like Zach Eady playing against uh, what looks like student managers. Right. Yes, <laughs> perfect. That's great basketball. Just turn yourself around in the page. Yes. That is great basketball right there. That is good. Are like, you guys telling me there is no place in the NBA for Zach Eady? Yeah, no, maybe the bench. Wow. Like, I mean, he's no, 25 a game. There's no way, dude. Uh, no way. Have you watched him? No way. He, no, no. Way. no, that's a dumb he question. No, no he's just he like the footwork isn't there. He can't, he, he's very slow. He's an anchor. He, mm. He's got anchors. He should wear air anchors. But as his, great, as his and shoes. <laughs> great college player. Has a skill set and dominates his skill set. There's reasons why. Look, like, there's a reason why he's still in college. Is because his pro prospects aren't great because of his footwork. But the two takes that people are mad at me on, and this is just Purdue fans, which I did not know that they were this loud and aggressive, and I understand it. Purdue has not been great at stuff in sports. It's also a cradle of basketball right there. Uh, but... They're proud of their basketball, and they've got a 7'5 person who uh, looks like college player of the year for the last couple of years because he's 7'5". <laughs> and and everyone wants one of those when he scores 30 points a game, 20 on foul shots, because he's just got student managers hanging from his armpit hair. <laughs> it's just, it's, it is giant in a way that's unusual. But the other take that I'm surprised people are objecting to because I, I watched it happen all weekend. I know that social media is an, you know, is a toxic dump for bile and hatred, but I'm just not used to seeing Adam Silver criticized this way. 
And when I look at what hockey is doing right now as a sport in terms of exciting its fan base and what I see basketball is doing um, comparatively, I understand how it is that I'm suddenly hearing for what feels like the first time that basketball has a leadership problem because they didn't have one with, with David Stern and Adam Silver is and has been one of the most popular commissioners, but people are unhappy enough with the sport that they're doing things like blaming Adam Silver for shot clock problems when and pointing out, hey, isn't uh, don't you have a uh, don't you have a watch as one of your biggest sponsors and you can't get ta- time and and refereeing right? I think the biggest concern is everything in sports is up. It's a booming time for sports. We're we're in the middle of a live rights renaissance because sports are drawing crowds. Their their revenue is up across the board. Everyone is doing well, and the only numbers that are of huge concern are the national TV games when it comes to basketball. Why do you think that is, though? Basketball. Why do you think the numbers are down, though? I have a couple of theories, and I think right now the sport of basketball is kind of where baseball was a couple of years ago in that they found a way to manipulate the current set of rules. The game evolved to a certain point that the rules became outdated, and the NBA has gone through this. They've added stuff before, and they were usually – I mean, a couple of decades ago, this was one of those uh, uh, leagues that was considered progressive in, in terms of innovation. The court is too small. (laughs) <laughs> the the three-point line is too close. We've lost, I'm not to sound like Bob Ryan, but there is no place for Zach Eady in the league anymore because everyone's just bombing away from three. And you, you see the type of athletes out there, Wimbanyama's out there, and it, it looks cartoonish on the court that they're playing on. But the revenue is with those courtside seats. So they have to decide something in the way that baseball just massively overhauled its rules and to, to the better of the game. I think football too. Yeah, I think I I think we're at that point and have been for a couple of years with the NBA, and they need to do something drastic with the rules. I, I do think too, from a macro view, that it's better for the NBA when the Lakers and the Warriors are really good instead of you know Minnesota and Denver. But they you have the but Celtics. They, though, but they've right? been good. They've been relevant enough. Uh, I know that the Lakers miss the playoffs, but you know they're on the West Coast. The, those stars being on the West Coast, I guess you can – I don't think it's one thing. I hate that argument, by the yeah. way. Like, that, that regions still matter in the internet I think age they do. when we're all connected and stuff. I get I get why you'd want the Knicks to be relevant. You want your big franchises to be great, but don't be afraid to learn something. I mean, you just saw what Anthony Edwards did last yeah. night. There ain't nobody doing that. Yeah, but he, he did it in Utah. Um, yeah, but if you're the new if, – if, if you're the baseball commissioner, would you rather have the Yankees be really good or Seattle? The I Yankees, mean, of course. You want but your Greg, marquee teams to be marquee teams. But you have that now. The Celtics are a marquee team. You have the Knicks as a really good team. Yeah. You have some of those teams you want. That helps. Big markets, they're good right now. Right, but the Celtics are, are – the, these Celtics are best just, known for the team I just, that should I, win. I hate doesn't. it. I just hate it. Okay. Like, that's what you need? You need four big market teams to make your it's sport relevant when your sport has been relevant for the last yeah, 40 years? Without, without much of their help. I, I imagine it can help. I don't think it's one – big thing it's just a couple of years ago this was a global sport positioned as good uh, as anyone except for maybe soccer it was the number two global sport on the planet and in its home country we're on a downward trajectory and i really think and it's not just regular season because regular season's trash and the star players don't care about it they've proven that they've tried to take steps there to correct it we're still not at a place – we're still looking at a postseason where we don't trust any of the top teams because no one's respecting this regular season. There's a lot of problems facing this sport, right. and not enough is being done about it when every other sport, including like women's basketball, women's pro basketball doesn't have the problems that the, the men's pro game does. They're, it, it's screaming at you. These numbers are really troubling, and they're not doing yeah. nearly enough. And you and also have the game's biggest star. Sorry, Greg. Yeah, sorry. They're old. LeBron, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. Those guys are still the biggest stars in the league, and the best player in the league is not aesthetically pleasing. His game is not Nikola Jokic. It's not, and he seems like he's Man, bored playing I, his own I sport. Hate, I, 
I mean, Dan, he's your best player. He represents so your great. best player. I love watching I know him in the play. postseason, not in the regular like, season. I it's love way too late. watching him play, but I've got the solution. Just like football solution is always more games, and baseball somehow, the commissioner of baseball, got everything wrong except for he fixed baseball. And so he's going to uh, be able to be okay. And here's Adam Silver's solution per The Athletic. The NBA is infusing betting into live games on NBA League Pass. The league and sports radar are global data company are rolling out a new option for league pass viewers to be able to track betting odds on NBA games as they watch them on the app and then offer the ability to click through to wager through the NBA's betting partners, FanDuel and DraftKings. Greg Cody is saying that the NIT is for losers. <laughs> yes. Uh, all of the non NCAA tournament things are, you know, the, the ba basketball invitational tournament. There's a new one, the women's uh, BIT, I think it's called. Look, if if you're throwing a parade to celebrate winning the NIT championship, th there's no bigger loser in sports than that. There's 68 teams. If you're not one of the 68 teams, put away your sneakers, take the offseason off. You don't need to continue to be playing just to say you're playing. I love it when you, you read about all these teams now that are turning down the NA NIT because what is the point? You love that. It's a weird thing to love. No, I do. I think it's right. You know, you got to draw the line somewhere. You know, you, you see all these sub-500 teams getting in, in the playoffs in the postseason. For what? You know, draw the line somewhere. Not everybody needs uh, a medal after the season. In, in the women's game, the WBIT has actually supplanted the women's NIT as the, the second best of the tournaments that you can get into. Right. I did not know this, but... The, the NCAA actually <laughs> pays for you to host the WBIT, whereas if you accept an NIT invitation, you have to pay out of your own pocket to run those games, which is why the WBIT supplanted. All that being said, Miami earned a number one seed in that WBIT and still decided, no, we're not doing it. And I would love to know why, right. because I think it seems the reason that they're just raw by being screwed over by the committee. Right, and they were. But if you're not, you know... 68 teams is enough. Right. I, I think all these other tournaments just dilute the sport. I'm just against them. You okay? He's having trouble yeah. with uh, just finishing uh, well, thoughts I'm, I'm without running, running out of breath yeah. today. I'm uh, wondering the last time an NIT champion actually held a parade. <laughs> there are no parades for NIT <laughs> I champions. Bet there are. <laughs> uh, we'll get to Pablo Torre here in a second, but let's just hear from Tom Crean. He does not agree with Greg Cody at all. Uh, there's no question about it. I would want to coach. I would want to develop my team. Uh, you've got bigger staffs than you've ever had. There's plenty of time for the portal. There's plenty of time to talk to recruits. There's plenty of time to negotiate NIL deals. There's not plenty of time to play. There's not plenty of time to get your players on the floor and give them a chance to get better. There's not plenty of time for guys to continue to play that may never get to play again. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is absolutely ridiculous. It's each coach's choice. I get it. But if you take away a chance to play the games, to put your team on the floor, mm -hmm. let them opt out. All right, the bowl season has it all the time. Let it happen. Who cares? Give your players and coaches a chance to keep coaching and playing, wow. and don't shortchange. If a guy doesn't want to play, go sit down. If a coach doesn't want to coach, go recruit. But there's got to be enough people to put five, six, seven people on the floor and go play. It makes absolutely zero sense to me. Uh, I'm pretty sure that in 2018 or 2017, the NIT was supposed to be in Indiana, and Tom Crean said, I don't want it here. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, no, that, 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 that went viral yesterday. Strong in him. I mean, Some added context, the administration declined the invitation and fired Tom Crean the very next day. Uh, Pablo, uh, context uh, I would have done without. Just I liked it my way better. Uh, context, <laughs> yeah, it's fairer. You're fairer with the context. The, the, I, the internet liked it better Dan's way. but yeah. <laughs> I like this Dan Levitard. Yeah, I, mean. I like it better my way. Pablo, uh, your thoughts. Pablo Torre Finds Out uh, is a podcast that I continue to tell you is climbing up the charts because it's doing something different than anyone else is doing. Uh, your thoughts on the NIT champion being the best of all the losers. Yeah, I, I want to like the NIT as a TV show, and I think the NIT has a brand problem. I think Greg, like arguing with America, America embodied by Greg, is a tough task because, yeah, how is it framed? If you're not one of the 68 best teams, then you're doing this other thing. And so the question is, how does the NIT revitalize itself? How would you retell the story of what it is? 
And I think you got to lean all the way in the other direction, right? Can't you like premise this on, look, Rick Pitino, the man that I think about in these times is somebody who I want to see on a sideline wearing an all white suit, being mad at everything and possibly having Trump operatives carry out legal grievances to reporters uh, quietly. Just random note, no context there. The point is, though, why can't he do that in a reality show style setting in which he is given something like an advertising opportunity? Why is the NIT trying to be like the NCAA tournament, but worse? Can't it be something else? Can we rebrand it? Can we tell that story a little differently so that it's actually interesting to viewers? That's the opportunity here. America wants to watch live college basketball. And so here's this other tournament. Why aren't they wanting to do it? How can we... How would you guys save it? I think that's the that's the question in front of us. How do you save the NIT by rebranding it? I don't think you can save it. It's a second place tournament. It's a fight for who's the 66 best team in the but country. What, what it's is ridiculous. what is saving it? It's just more Who cares? It's just more gambling options. Like what do you? What well, is, that's why it exists. It's just more action. So, like what what are you guys being so precious about here? Right. Like it's simply giving you the opportunity <laughs> to have more action on games that you don't care about because you're just betting on numbers and uniforms. I'm just saying. I fully understand why teams that are left out of the NCAA tournament have their pride and turn down the lower NIT. Okay, I the, get that. Okay, and you guys, you guys really are being precious and puritanical about some of this stuff where all of it has to be about sports integrity instead of just entertainment. Can it be made for TV? Like, for example, Pablo, the glory days. And tell me, you guys wouldn't like to see this now in football. This is a bygone age right here. I'm going to put up for you something, an old-timey television show that used to be the NFL's fastest man competition. Oh, wow. The loser sentenced to two more weeks of training. It's a fair start, and Herschel Walker is first out of the block. But here comes Daryl Green with that long, smooth, powerful stride. Daryl Green wins it. He's yet to be beaten here. In the it's a fair start, and Rod Woodson is out very well. Will Galt will have to go if he's going to catch him. He's not going to catch him. Rod Woodson wins it. He moves into the... Rod Woodson, because Daryl Green has won each and every race and gotten faster with each run. It's a clean start, and Daryl Green is out of the blocks like a shot. At 30 yards, he starts to accelerate, and it's that long, smooth, fluid stride that powers Daryl Green to victory. He is the Subaru NFL. Look at the smile man. on Roy's face. <laughs> Ahmad Rashad. That's Ahmad right. Rashad. That's right, yes. <laughs> Brings you back look, to a look, time, look, Roy. Look at how happy all of you are. Look at the Subaru World's Fastest Man uh, competition. I like it. Herschel yeah. Walker should not be that fast for how big he was. No, I think <laughs> three DK, times bigger I think than Daryl Green. DK Metcalf would be that kind of fast if he was doing that right now you uh, could you could bring that back tyreek hill's watching that going i want that bring it back that's what jack, i was jack, jack. saying uh, yeah, everyone back here said jack it's how do, how do uh, we all know you're a bit better him. than you do mm -hmm. okay. you can yeah. bring that back uh, say the thing i like to be jack. uh inconsistent i like to surprise you uh -huh. jack oh there you go oh, that kind of thing that's my corn cane <laughs> You sound wheezy today in a way. Are you are you okay with your you're not finishing thoughts? It doesn't seem like you have the stamina to have the win to complete sentences. Oh, I, I appreciate that. While saying you'd run analysis. a six minute mile, by the way. Well, well I think six oh six. Six oh six. With a little training I could. Listening to Greg Wheeze has given me a solution to save the NIT. <laughs> you're welcome. Okay, tell me you wouldn't watch the NIT if every team had to have its head coach play on the floor with them. What's like wrong with the NIT? It doesn't need any saving. I'm intrigued, though. I mean, you want think Rick, about, Rick Pitino think about out there? It. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I'd watch. <laughs> You're, I'm telling you, Dan. Hey, there's a game on right now. It's St. John's versus whoever the, whoever the f*** else. And guess who's playing point guard? Rick Pitino. I like Age that. 66. <laughs> You're not watching that immediately? I am. Laren Yeager with the dunk. By the way, <laughs> Greg Cody trying to bring back old things. Listen to this. This is one of it's it's an idea he's had for many years. He's done it for many years, and it's a terrible idea. 
It's the haiku challenge uh -huh. ab <laughs> about March Madness. Yes. And the haiku challenge, what's the syllable count on haikus? Five, seven, five? five? Seven, five. Yeah, it's yeah. 17, generally five, seven, five. Yeah. All right, so the syllable count is three, uh, three thoughts or phrases, the first five syllables, the second seven syllables, the third five syllables. And Greg Cody, as an example, as a helpful example to his listeners and readers, writes in, Vital smiles a mile. Billis masters the bracket. Laranyaga weeps. That's a haiku. So good. Bring <laughs> it. it. You know, Why, beat that. You, beat that. Beat that. You, haiku in it. He, he has been trying to uh, resurrect the haiku right. for about 15 years unsuccessfully. Yeah, I went, back when I did a blog uh, for the Miami Herald, I had an annual haiku challenge, uh, and it would, you know, it would get 40 or 50 entries, usually the same people entering 20 times, two, two guys entering 20 times each. But some of them were pretty fun. You know, it's, 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 it's a good challenge, actually, because I think it's, it's the form of poetry that requires you to be the most succinct, obviously. And, uh, and do you rhyme? Does rhyming matter? You know, people come into a haiku uh, from all different angles, so I enjoy it. Jack. Wow. <laughs> Haikus in the NIT really catering to a younger audience. Yep. I, mean, yeah, I like Greg's. Can I get Greg's poetry power rankings, his final four of poetry forms? Because there are other kinds, and Greg has clearly just seized upon the haiku. Oh, I think he's only going to give you that one. Okay, I, what is uh, in, in brevity, though? Nothing beats the haiku, right? Like, I know, I know Muhammad Ali, <laughs> back when he was still Cassius Clay, I think, famously had a two word poem, which was yes. me. We. So that's probably the shortest poem uh, is on record. But efficient. Yeah. <laughs> Look at how disappointed Seinfeld is. Mm. Seinfeld. What's the deal with that? <laughs> I, I'm not sure whether it was we, me, or me, we, but it is on record as the shortest poem ever written. Yeah. Uh, Craig, here's some sound of you uh, wheezing. Cody's just <laughs> general late. Sounds like a car trying to start, oh like God. a really <laughs> bad car engine. Good. Cody's Cold just motor. general late. <laughs> Cody's just general late. Cody's just general late. <laughs> really turning that key, you're like, come on, baby, one more time. It's uh, it's, an just general it's an old car. It's an old car. It's a Studebaker. Cody's just general late. Feels it, he, it feels like the underworld trying to communicate with you. Cody's just <laughs> general late. I like that. Uh, Pablo quickly. Uh, Pablo Torre finds out what should people be looking for. Yeah, so all of sports media these days is a debate tournament. Everybody thinks they're the best. Nick Wright, my arch nemesis now, thinks he's the best. Stephen A., Will Kane, all these people. Today's guest on Pablo Torre finds out is the actual best debater in sports and he just happens to be the guy who's also taking down the ncaa and so that is the guest that is the story that is the man that you should hear from even though he looks down upon all the gas bags who think uh you know they're better than he is the this master is the debater the what would be the odds on a master debater making an appearance as an expression on pablo torre finds out what would be the betting odds on that i believe there's a DraftKings super boost about that uh see you um, later pablo good seeing you again <laughs> goodbye it is time for Stugatz to share his game notes. No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boy Stu. Weekend observations brought to you by Miller Life. Great taste, just 96 calories available for delivery. Dan, it's the greatest thing on the sports calendar until the next greatest thing on the sports calendar. Winning pedigree, senior guard play, Fake outrage over teams that were snubbed. Perfectly healthy people calling in sick to work on Thursday and Friday. And Dan, just like that, make no mistake about it, March Madness is back. You excited? I will be on Thursday. All right. Dan, I'll be sick this Thursday and Friday. Spoiler alert! If you haven't printed out a bracket... And filled it out with a pen or a pencil. Guess what? You haven't filled out a bracket. Really? Yep. Print it out. Put pen to paper. Hand it in. That's how you fill out a bracket. Who's Greg, it, am I right? Who's yes. accepting paper brackets I, at this point? I have point? no idea. You have to. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, let's do this. an elite level slur right before. Oh, yeah, I, know. I don't know what happened there. Your tongue is like 45 pounds right now. <laughs>
Put it, uh, put it on the poll, please. Is Stugatz's tongue forty-five pounds? <laughs> also, uh, our March uh, March Madness tournament that we're going to have with everybody. Lebetardaf.com is where you go. It's uh, it's merch madness, and it's going to be interactive. If you want to do this with us, Lebetardaf.com. Do that now. It's active now. You were objecting to what it is I was saying about printing it out, putting pen to yes, paper? Yes, yes. That's how you do it, though. No, I mean, it no, feels better when you do any, it that not way. Not anymore. Like, oh. I, I understand in this room we are technologically atrophied, and uh, and I understand what you're saying, but that's a particular demo over 50. Okay. Purdue. Losing a game, they should have won. March. The Boilermakers. NC State. Beating North Carolina. In the ACC championship game, after getting swept by the Tar Heels in the regular season. You know what they say, Dan? Madness. Hard to beat a team three times. <laughs> Unless you're talking about Boston College in Miami. Because Boston College made it look easy. The Eagles. Rick Pitino's season came to a premature finish. Something Rick is all too familiar with. Rick Pitino opted out of playing in the NIT and opted into hunting down and sinking his teeth into every committee member. He's out for blood. No NIT. Your beloved NIT. In this week's edition of We Are Old, Jerome Bettis Jr. committed to Notre Dame, the minivan. See Niner's son running around on a diamond somewhere? Did you see what uh, Edron James's son at Cincinnati, what his name is? Jizzle. Jizzle James. <laughs> JJ. <laughs> I have a simple rule. If it walks like a boilermaker, talks like a boilermaker, and plays basketball like a boilermaker... It's not making it past the first weekend of the NCAA tournament. Wow. The P in Purdue stands for phonies. Whoa. What happened? They're not good. Uh, put it on the poll, please. Do you know what a boilermaker is? Hmm. You do? Yeah. What is it? Uh, it's somebody who makes boilers, who takes steel and creates this boiler that holds, uh, you know, hot steam or hot uh, hmm. liquid. Okay. Eight of the ten teams entering last week did not win their league title. Eight of the top ten teams is what I was trying to say. March. 45-pound tongue. FAU <laughs> and Temple in the American Athletic Conference semifinals. Couple of owls cutting it up. FAU and Temple over the weekend was a hoot. Tony, stash this away, the something to ponder file. Russell Wilson... At Justin Fields at a combined 4.5 million or Tua at 55 million. No need to discuss it now. Just stash it away for a rainy day. Greg Cody just showed me on his computer. He just put it in front of me and it was just the sentence the blue whale's tongue is 2.7 tons. That's what it weighs. Huh. Uh, put it on the poll, please, at Levitard Show. <laughs> Did you know the blue whale's tongue weighed, uh, what is that, like 8,000 pounds? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> More than a Ford F-150. No. Yeah. 8,000, what is 2.7 tons? <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> I cannot believe a fish. <laughs> or it's something fish adjacent, because it's not a fish. It's a mammal. But it's a mammal. I know, yeah, but I, ju I just... <laughs> <laughs> Something aquatic is what you're going for, Dan. That's crazy. That is crazy that a tongue that heavy exists in the ocean. <laughs> like, what is that? Aaron Rodgers said Sandy Hook was an absolute tragedy. No Sherlock. Headline, Vanderbilt's Jerry Stackhouse out after five seasons as head coach. The first time I heard Jerry Stackhouse was the Vanderbilt head coach was when they fired him. No. Stack. Come on. I thought Kevin Stallings was still there. Death, taxes, and a team announcing Ben Simmons should be ready for the start of next season. Kevin Stefanski, some advice. Don't look over your shoulder. Top five guys who shouldn't look over their shoulder 
this coming football season. Wow. All yeah. right. Let's see what we O-L-I. got there. Wow. Ryan Day. Mike Vrabel is just a short drive away. Vrabes. Number five, Russell Wilson. I know what Tomlin said. You know, Fields is the future. Let me tell you something. You play bad. Trust me. Fields is the now. He's the present. Jalen Hurts, number four. Stagats, aren't these people who should be looking over their shoulders? They should not. You don't want to see what's there. I mean, Jalen Hurts looks over his shoulder. You know who's sitting there? Kenny Pickett. (laughs) If you think for a second that Philadelphia Eagles fans won't start chanting, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. Do you realize that Stugatz's greatest fear as a head coach would be a backup (laughs) quarterback who has a two-syllable name because he's terrified of the chant? Like, for some reason, you are are the opposite of leadership. You're just, you're trying to coach to avoid a chant. I never never thought about it that way. (laughs) Some quarterback should have that written in their contract. (laughs) We're only signing like Christopher's. Change their names to two-syllable names for a competitive advantage. Number three, Anthony Richardson. Flacco, Flacco, Flacco. That's the last guy you want there. Number two, Kevin Stefanski. Rabel, just a short walk away. Rabes. And number one, Nick Sirianni. Without being physically present, Bill Belichick will be at every single Eagles game. He will. Here come the Rockets. <laughs> Put it on the poll, Juju, at Lebetard Show. Without being present, will Bill Belichick be at every Eagles game next year? Spent the first half of Sunday in 27-degree weather and spent the second half of Sunday in 95-degree weather. Tale of two halves. Pittsburgh Steelers have two quarterbacks. You, of course, know what that means, right, Dan? They don't have one quarterback. Good guess, but in this case, it might mean they actually have two. (laughs) Really? (laughs) An upset. Justin Fields, the rare backup who has better MVP odds than the starter. Crazy. The things you do when you are driving around the Midwest on a gummy in the passenger seat. Top five people in sports that connote St. Patrick's Day. OLI. Mike Cubbage. <laughs> Get it? Why do you like that, Greg? Yeah, cubbage, cabbage. It's a I stretch, get it. Right. Yeah. Couldn't find anyone named Cabbage. It's perfect. Cabbage Patch Kids. <laughs> oh wow. Sports though. Greg. Oh, yeah. Greg. What? Will you quit just just quit with you hear a word and then the first thing that comes to your head it becomes cabbage cabbage I mean, patch he kids. He said he couldn't think of a cabbage. I fed him a cabbage. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. All right, good. Paul Beers. Number five. Patty Mills. Number four. Jeff Ireland. Oh now, now you finally get the fanfare. Number three, Ken Shamrock. Number two, Andrew Luck. And number one, Dan, George McGinnis. Didn't you have a top five athletes who connote corn in honor of the pop-off? Yeah, popcorn. Yeah, I'll get to that later. Okay. (laughs) Whit Merrifield is a Philly. If I shot a basketball like Amin... I would make sure nobody ever saw me shoot a basketball. It hasn't started yet, and I already missed Jim Nance. Dan, if you close your eyes and concentrate, you know what you can smell? Augusta. (laughs) Put put it on the poll, Juju, at Lebetard Show. If you close your eyes and concentrate, can you smell Augusta? It's election day in Russia. Spoiler alert, Putin wins. Aaron Hicks is an angel. (laughs) <laughs> Kyrie, do it in the playoffs that without was, LeBron. That was ridiculous, by the way. That was not a basketball shot. <laughs> that was not a game-winning basketball shot. It was throwing a baseball left-handed. I guess he looked at the time and he's like, all right, it's overtime. If I miss it, I can throw this up left-handed, right? It's the only way I could get it over uh, Jokic's fingers. Dan, you know what Mike Tomlin is going to do with Justin Fields? Uh, play him? He's going to take him for a little test drive. You know what I'm saying? 
A little peek under the hood. A little kick of the old tires. You get it now, right? I do, yes. Thank okay, you. Good. If Sunday or Sunday was your first day ever watching the NBA, you would have thought Bobby Portis was Michael Jordan. Headline, Kobe Bryant's parents are selling his 2000 NBA championship ring. $100,000. Chris Paul, here's your chance. Oh, no. What happened? Loyola Chicago blew an 11-point lead late in regulation and missed 15 consecutive shots from the field. Do you know what the S in Sister Jean stands for, Dan? I do not. It stands for Sister Jean Choked. Oh, no. I'm going to hell. No. Speaking of hell, or Bryles. Dan, those are the weekend observations. We've got our pop-off later in the show. Greg Cody, the Corn King, against my popcorn. That'll be probably in the post-game. We've got some local hour stuff that I want to do in the next segment. But Ron McGill is with us now. And uh, before we get to stuff with Ron McGill, I don't know because of demographics whether the answers will be different generationally, but Aaron Taylor Johnson has been offered the role of James Bond, evidently. James Bond, uh, one of the most iconic film series you will ever find. 007. Thank you, Stugatz. You got it. Uh, a lot of people criticized Daniel Craig, but they warmed up to him. So I ask you, who was the best 007 uh, at Lebetard show? And your choices are going to be uh, Daniel Craig and Sean Connery and Roger Moore and Pierce Brosnan. Uh, who is your choice, Ron McGill, for the best of all the 007s? Uh, definitely Sean Connery. The original was the best. He set the tone. Uh, was he? He was before Roger Moore. Yes. Sean Connery. Yeah. Was he was the first? original. He was Absolutely. The original. Yeah. Okay. The very first. Right. Okay. So Run up against Odd Job. <laughs> what? With the the razor brim hat. You don't remember Odd oh. Job? No, I do remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't remember his name. I do remember the hat. Yep. The razor uh, brim yes. Hat. Uh, for those of you who do not know, the nemesis of 007 uh, was an Asian man who flung a hat that had like knives on it or blades or whatever. Who a throws razor sharp hat? brim? <laughs> Is it like a Peaky a Blinder? Uh, kind of like yeah, one of the, one of those kinds of hats. An amazing weapon, though. <laughs> yeah, when you think about it. Weapon, right, right. If you're accurate, yes, it's kind of a. <laughs> One, if you're not. A deadly fedora. <laughs> you have to be very accurate with the hat. Otherwise, you're just throwing a race blade at it, somebody. Yeah. Uh, I want to play. We're going to update some things here with our tournament. I think uh, because of Billy, we did a very poor job of that yesterday. It was just a general sprawling mess. And I don't know if something like this will have made our tournament of oddities, but I just want to play one of the more memorable moments we've had with Ron McGill here, where he was talking to someone he thought was a doctor, but was oh, God. was really? a, was actually really? Adam McKay. Hold on a oh, second. Geez. When you tell me, sir, with all due respect, when you come on here and you say you have 69 to Nile Crocodile, <laughs> do you understand what that means? Okay, that means that not only are you giving pleasure to the crocodile, but the crocodile is giving pleasure to you. At least and that is an, okay. that is an <laughs> accurate description of what happened. This was really? a 14-foot really? uh, well, Nile Crocodile. In this, in, this, in, this, in this country, sir, that in most states is illegal. It's considered bestiality. I don't know if that made the tournament in any way. I hope it did. Uh, we were just talking before you came on, Ron, about the blue whale's tongue being 2.7 tons, uh, yeah. which I, I simply couldn't believe that something like that could, like, what is a, a mathematical fact that you could give us that would top that one if you were just trying to impress us? The blue whale's tongue weighs 2.7 tons. Well, the trunk of an elephant has over 40,000 individual muscles just in the trunk. Hmm. And how impressive is that as a limb compared to the other limbs that animals have? Is that the most impressive of all the limbs? <laughs> oh, yeah. For me, by far. By far. What do all of those, uh, what do all of those things do? They just are able to move the trunk in so many different ways. You know, the trunk of an elephant can take down a huge tree or it can pick up a dime. I mean, the dexterity of that, that limb is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, you seem stunned by that, Greg. Uh, the idea of an elephant trunk picking up a dime 
is more surprising to me than an elephant knocking over a tree. And it's just yeah, like, I know, but that's that, that's diversity. That's the dexterity of that limb. That's what makes I it so amazing. I've been picking up I, dime I pieces seen. since the dawn of time. Oh, boy. Uh, I, I have seen an elephant pick up a dime with its trunk. What's he do with it? Invest it, or does he spend it? Oh, my it's God. It's usually at Hillstone during happy hour. My God. Ah. Uh, Ron, <laughs> what's going on with sawfish in, in the Keys? They're they're acting very what? bizarrely. I wish I knew, Mike. They're dying off, and it's something that's a big red flag. And I hope they can find the cause of this because it is a, you know, it is a protected fish. It's a, becoming an endangered fish, and uh, it could be an indicator of a much bigger problem. Yeah, uh, that's what I want to talk to you about because this is an endangered species, as as you outlined. And for those that haven't seen the videos uh, that have been trending locally, and uh, I know newscasts have picked up on it, these sawfish are essentially beaching themselves and acting very erratic, attacking people that are trying to help them. It's a truly bizarre video, and no one knows the root cause of this because they're doing this in mass. Are there any good theories, Ron, that you've heard? No, I mean, I've just heard there's some kind of toxin in the water, some kind of something in the air that is, you know, invading and making a neurological issue with these fish, uh, because it seems to be a neurological issue, um, but nobody knows what is causing it. Ron, I saw a video on Instagram um, that said that you can't choke an owl. Is that true? Uh, I don't think that's true. I think if you try to choke an owl, you're going to get taloned to death. Tony, what's what's going on with the hair? I'm sorry. I just joined on. What's what the is... deal with owls? He's uh, he's suffering the punishment of being Jerry Seinfeld uh, today. But oh, oh okay. Like, I was just not... trying to figure out what that was because it's scary. Are you, Seinfeld. Are you uh, alleging, is this video alleging that it is impossible to successfully choke an owl? That's, that's what the video said. Again, I'm just giving you the, the data. I'll choke the shit for now. Uh, do well, you? Do... I, I think I think I think an owl probably can be choked. I mean, it, it certainly has a neck uh, and it certainly is a fragile neck. I mean, you know, so, but whether it can, you know, whether it can defend itself with those talents, uh, whether you're gonna be able to do it easily is not the question. It is possible though. I, I, I just can't see it not being you possible. You remember when John Cheney threatened to kill John Calipari <laughs> in that press conference? <laughs> He'll kill you! That was a great moment. <laughs> can you guys find the video for that, please? Because it was a great moment, and we can all relive it right now. Uh, incidentally, Tony, every time I look at you, I th I see someone different. Right now, it's 1960s era's Beatles. Yes. <laughs> oh, kick your ass. The yeah, we'll wind. get that in a second, Mike. Settle down. Uh, uh, Ron, in, in some sad news, I've got some video to play for you here, but it was national news, sad news. A young giraffe at Zoo Miami died from a broken neck after running into a fence. Uh, what? What happened there? Because you guys are very careful about how you protect every every yeah, animal I there, wish, but the giraffes especially. I, I wish I knew, Dan. Uh, the giraffe was found dead in the morning. First check in the 7 a.m. in the morning. Had been dead for, for probably several hours because it already rigor had already set into the animal's body. None of the other giraffe that were with that giraffe had any sign of injury or trauma. We didn't see any tracks of any animals like coyotes or bobcats or anything like that or dogs surrounding the area. Um, it's obvious or apparent that something frightened that calf, that, that juvenile that made it run into a fence and break its neck. Um, I, I wish I had an answer to it. You know, there's there's no way to sidestep it. It's a tragedy that happened. We've, we're monitoring the herd all the time now. Uh, I think we're considering putting cameras back there to see if there's something going on that we are not aware of. But again, the fact that none of the other 10 giraffe, um, you know, show any signs of any trauma or any kind of injury, who knows? Maybe it stepped on a scorpion or something, you know, something really freaked it out uh, that individually affected just that animal. Uh, I wish I had an answer, but it was it was certainly a tragic loss. The plural of giraffe is giraffe. Yeah, both giraffes and giraffe. I've heard it both ways. Uh, put it on the poll, please. Juju at Lebitard show plural of giraffes, uh, giraffes or giraffe. Uh, let me play for you from the Fort Worth Zoo here. Elmo the gorilla is released back into his enclosure. You've told us the stories about this happening occasionally at uh, zoos all over. There were two zookeepers already in there. So yeah. what, what happened in this situation and what was going to happen in this situation? What do you do in this situation when the gorilla comes running out and there's still zookeepers in there? Was is that gorilla about to do something bad? Uh, no, no. You know, that's that's a big mis misconception. Everybody's like, oh, the gorilla's out to kind of kill these people. No, the gorilla was very upset. There's no question about it. But I'm telling you, the gorilla was also frightened. Um, it's a big male, and he's, he's basically displaying. He's using body language to threaten the people to leave. He does not want to have a physical conflict with those people. And those keepers were smart. They reacted perfectly. They didn't turn their back. They tried to 
slowly get their way out of the exhibit without causing any kind of panic. But what that gorilla is doing, what gorillas do to other gorillas in the wild, they will use this body language. They make themselves look as big as possible. They make the hair stand up on their arms. They tighten their lips. They arch their backs and they look very powerful like that. And that's their visual body language saying, get out of here. You do not belong here. But I'm going to tell you right now, that gorilla's heartbeat was at a very accelerated rate. He was probably as frightened or as agitated as those keepers were. Um, that was obviously human error. Those keepers went in there when they thought the gorilla had been secured, when it had not been secured. By the way, that happened sometime last year. It's just that video just now came out. Um, but I think it proves the point that these animals, do, they want to avoid that physical conflict whenever possible. And he was going through a series of steps, classic of a gorilla, showing this dominance, showing that without actually physically attacking the keepers. And to him, it worked because they eventually left the habitat as soon as they had the opportunity. Case closed. More recently on the National Geographic show Queens, we've got Sophia the Killer Whale, a 60-year-old orca, a grandmother, uh, captured on camera killing a great white shark. How rare is this video? You've told us before about the killer whale uh, being uh, able to do this, but I have not seen it before. So how rare is this footage? Uh, the footage is extremely rare. I don't think the actual incident is rare, though. Um, you know, I know in, in South Africa, I've been to South Africa where I've watched white sharks in the water and then I've gone back when the white sharks have totally evacuated the entire bay because killer whales have taken residence there. And it's really disturbed the South Africans because it's ruined a huge part of their economy. People pay a tremendous amount of money to go out in these shark cages to observe white sharks. And now they've evacuated the bay out there in South Africa because the killer whales are there. So killer whales do effectively kill great white sharks. Uh, they will actually cause great white sharks to evacuate areas. So it's not uncommon that it happens, but it is very uncommon to get it on film. How about this orca uh, doing this to a bottlenose dolphin? It's a short video, but what do you make of this video? Oh, wow. Yeah. An orca um, basically jumps out of the water and gets the dolphin in midair. Don't know what to tell you about that. Again, you know, orcas are predators um, and they are, you know, capable of eating dolphin. I don't know that they do on a regular basis. But they are fish eaters. Uh, of course, dolphins are mammals. I understand that before everybody jumps on my stuff here. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the what the purpose was behind that. I don't know if it was aggression, if it was play. I don't know what it was. But um, great, great video. I mean, incredible video. How about this animal video of an owl trying to attack something that would become a wildcat? Al trying to attack something. That's your cue yeah. video to play the John Cheney video. <laughs> for giving them hell down in West Virginia. And here you get a hell of a job right here today. Good job. Three class guys. And you pick them out here and single them out. You can't get that damn nerd to threaten the guy. Shut up, guys. You can't get that nerd to threaten the guy. Hey, hey, hey. Wow. That's hostile. That's, that's very hostile. That's March. Uh, your reaction to that was the same as it was to the orca hitting a bottlenose dolphin in midair. Uh, Ron, good seeing you again, sir. Thank you. Always a pleasure, guys. Have a good week. If I see you again, I'm going to kick your ass. Roy, you're usually good at this stuff, uh, rummaging through the Wayback File. Greg Cody's wheezing laugh reminds me of the wheezing laugh of some sort of cartoon character that I'm not able to place which cartoon character it was that laughed like this. Cody's just general late... Uh, Snightly Whiplash's dog. How? Muttley! How? Muttley! How? Muttley. How? Cody's just How? general How? late... I think he might be right about that. I'm not totally sure, Who? but uh, there there is a laugh in cartoon land <laughs> that sounds like the aged, decrepit laugh of one Greg Cody when he can't quite get the wheeze out correctly, so it's just sort of muffled. Cody's just general late... We'll see if video can track down the laugh I'm talking about. It is Muttley. I've uh, confirmed it. Uh, Roy's good at that. Yeah. He's it got was it. Dick Dastardly, by the way, who was the owner of Muttley the dog. It was a Hannah Barbera cartoon. Like <laughs> the <laughs> Perils of Penelope Pit Stop, I think. Ow. Yeah, what do you Dick consider Dastardly. him what? his owner? They kind of were like a duo. Yeah. They were an evil doing duo to just break it down to 
pet owner dynamics is a little complicated. Yeah, that's it's true. It's layered. It's nuanced. Yeah, absolutely. I have a lot of local stuff to get to. I'm wondering if Mike and Roy suffered any sort of post-traumatic stress disorder from losing at home to the Tampa Bay Lightning and watching five goals scored by the Lightning, which isn't something we've seen happen a whole lot to the Panthers this year. What an unbelievable game that was over the weekend. By the way, ESPN came out with its top 10 active rivalries in the NHL, and the Panthers made this list twice Wow! Uh, and the number three overall rivalry was with the Tampa Bay Lightning it was an old school loss to the Lightning in that Bobrovsky seemed to let everything in early and 88 was just out of his mind what was the final shot total Roy uh, in the second and third periods it was 38 to 5 in favor of the Panthers unfortunately with those five shots on goal from Tampa three of them were allowed in the net by by Bob what an unbelievable game. What a moment this league is having right now. Night after night after night, there seems to be a division leader at a division leader with a lot to play for. And now Ovechkin and his peak male form has gotten the Washington Capitals back into the playoff race. The skill that these guys are playing with right, right now, uh, I was locked in. I made it a plan. My, my, my weekend was I'm watching the Lightning play the Panthers and I'm making it home in time to take a gummy and watch the Oilers take on the Avalanche. And Nathan McKinnon's walk-off overtime assist winner that he bounced off his skate to his stick with a pinpoint accuracy to win that game with less than a second left this sport is intense right now there is playoff level intensity being played every night the skill is out of this world all the teams seem to be good there are going to be legitimately good teams that are missing the playoffs this is actually one of the few sports that can afford to expand because there are just so many good teams in the league right now. And Nathan McKinnon is going to end up winning the Hart Trophy this season. I mean, if you look at the wild card standings in the Eastern Conference, this is up for grabs. It's between like five teams right now. Uh, between the Lightning, the Capitals, the Red Wings, the Islanders, and the Sabres, it's going to be interesting seeing who's going to get uh, the first and second wild The Panthers' schedule specifically is just a great example of what the schedule is like right now in the NHL. They're off for a few days, and then they pick right back up with six games and ten nights. Nashville, New York Rangers, Boston Bruins, the Islanders who are battling for a playoff spot. It is out of this world right now, and I really hope that people give it a chance because there is nothing better than the Stanley Cup playoffs. It is super intense, especially if you're in one of those markets where those teams go on a run. There are so many great you're teams You're saying right now. basically that someone else this year, the Panthers barely made the playoffs last year and then end up in the Stanley Cup final. You're saying that can happen again, that there are enough good teams that an eight can wipe out a uh, President's Trophy winner. I'm saying a team that would miss the playoffs if you simulate the playoffs. Uh, there are a couple of different – incarnations where those teams that are OLI probably make a deep run. The sport is that hotly contested right now. It's just... But you can see the lightning getting there, right? Yeah. You, yeah right. Dude, dude, we've seen hot goalies, whether it be Jaguar or 88 back in his day. We've I hate seen, 88. I hate 88. And the thing is, he's been... Te- <laughs> You're he's terrified had, of him. He's, he's been a, terrible all he's had a season. He's a really bad season by his standards. In fact, the, the Florida Panthers, the last time they played Vasilevsky, put up a tutty on You're him. You're scared of him. You're yeah, so scared. He, he, yeah. He's even during timeouts like the splits this guy does just when he's like hanging out waiting for the play to start back up he's intimidating yeah didn't help matters that the Panthers hit the post like five times in that game but that's one of those games and I know Matthew Kachuk got hammered for his quotes after the game because (laughs) he's actually getting hit with wow that didn't sound so confident we can hang with these guys was a quote the guy that said in his locker room we're coming back and winning in this building when they were an eight seed playing the one seed boston's getting hit with lack of confidence get out of here with that Uh, oddly enough the bruins panthers made this top 10 list of rivalries and i don't feel like it's there no it's not i figured it was carolina carolina for sure for me i maybe they're doing the thing because bruins panthers was the highest rated uh, nhl game of quite some time that game seven in Boston, I don't feel like there's a rivalry there, but whether it be the Oilers, the Avalanche, the Stars, the Panthers, the Rangers, the Bruins, or you could make maybe make a shout of any of those other teams that are just outside of that get hot. There's so many teams that can win this cup right now. To have an overwhelming favorite to win the President's Trophy, which the Panthers are, seems like a misstep. Because right now, I don't think this late into a year, have you seen the favorite be in the plus 650 range? Usually it gets down a little bit lower, but it's a toss-up. 
I believe that I can stun both Greg Cody and Stugatz by asking them, do you know who the AAU College ha- uh, Hockey Division Three national champion is? Huh. Either one of you. Do Would either you one expect of you. me to? Yes, I do. Really? Yes. Say it again. What is it? The, the AAU College Hockey Division Three national champion. It's wordy. I would say uh, Rhode Island. I would say New Hampshire. It's the University of Miami. What? Hockey Town, USA. <laughs> They're climbing up to Division Two. I believe Matthew Schneider's kid plays for this team, by the way. I don't think Rhode, uh, Rhode Island or New Hampshire is in Division Three. Yeah, I think they, would be, they would be high. That. This is club okay. club hockey. You know, they don't have the same kind of funding. This isn't inside the NCAA, but the the Miami hockey program has been good for quite some time, bal- uh, playing some of their games at Kendall Ice Arena and whatnot. Oh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, they're 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 making a climb. <laughs> I wanted to circle back around because uh, Cody mentioned this earlier, and I know Mike has been wanting to talk about it. Mike has gotten very close to the University of Miami women's basketball team. Uh, Mike, and I don't know if I've already betrayed you by saying this on air, but when you get angry at the University of Miami basketball, the men's basketball team, you have accused them of quitting because they just were so terrible in a way that was confusing, right? Because Miller and Wong were important last year, but not that important that the, the Hurricanes would lose all of their games for six weeks at the end of the season and not be competitive, really. But one of the things you guys mentioned is that, yes, the NCAA announced Miami is the number one overall seed for the WBIT and put out pub, uh, you know press release and bracket explaining Miami as the number one team. Uh, Stony Brook announces that they were playing Miami, and then Miami declines the invitation. So James Madison is added and made the number one overall seed after uh, not being in, right? Like... <laughs> Yeah. So you've got a you've got a one seed that wasn't even in the tournament because Miami's just like never mind we're yeah. not going to do this. I haven't spoken to people because like this truly came as a shock and I don't pretend to know everything about the women's basketball game. My my focus is pretty singularly focused on the Miami Hurricanes basketball team and what happens inside the ACC. But all the coverage that I consumed throughout the ACC tournament and Selection Sunday. It was a foregone conclusion that Miami had done enough to get into this tournament. Yeah, is nine teams from one conference a lot? Were they the ninth team? Yes, yes. But most of these people that do this for a living, if not all of them, had Miami in after they won UNC. They didn't after they beat UNC in the tournament. They said that they were in independent of that result. They went into that tournament get the extra win, they should be safe. Getting no reward for making a push to the Elite Eight last year, totally forget, uh, forgotten, and the coverage on Selection Sunday, and I understand why we're here. Caitlin Clark is a megastar, huge drawing power, but it is so focused on the top seeds. You couldn't get a word in edgewise about a two seed, let alone a bubble team. No one was held accountable. They have this 10-minute interview with someone from the committee. Miami is not brought up once in it. And I'm, I'm truly upset by it because everyone that's supposed to be an expert in this field said, for sure, Miami is getting in. And there is zero explanation as to why. It was major disrespect for the program and, and for Katie Meyer after what they did last year. When you reach the Elite Eight, you have to have the benefit of doubt. <laughs> Fight through it. Fight through it. You're almost there. You have to have the benefit of doubt. They weren't even a bubble team. Hold on, gather yourself and let's just play monthly laughing. Gather your voice, gather your your strength. Is that Greg or Muttley? (laughs) Roy, you didn't even talk to Roy about that, and he brought it up and knew exactly what cartoon from whatever. I know he has wheelhouse. He's a bit of a savant. Just general late. Greg, you want to try again? Yeah, I, I don't often get angry at something like this, but I was angry on behalf of, of UM because such a slap in the face. They were disrespected. They make the Elite Eight. They go 19-12. and 12. They beat then the number four team in the country. They, weren't a per- they didn't have a perfect season. They were 8-10 and 10 against the ACC, 2-7 and seven against ranked teams. But still, when you're an Elite Eight team and you go 19-12 and 12 the next season... <laughs> 
Last were, season doesn't rank, count, though. Ranked, yeah, it, 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 it should. It should, should, earn, it should earn some it respect. Should, it should for in terms of prestige. It, it really should. They it had should. a ranked win at Mississippi State uh, against a good uh, team there. The home win against NC State. I thought we were in a little trouble when NC State got a three seed because I thought they were better than that. Uh, Katie Meyer absolutely maximized the talent on this roster. This right. is a rebuilding year for the Hurricanes. They'll be fine. They have a top ten class coming in. Katie Meyer and her staff are exceptional in what they do. I'm a little bit more worried about the men uh, because Heavy was a head that uh, wears a crown of the blue blood, and we choked under that pressure. Yeah. And it seemed the men ended the season on a 10-game losing streak. Embarrassing. I think all the accusations that I've had down the stretch that this team might have quit on them, they, they were warranted because that was quitting time. They should have gotten in based on last year. What are you guys talking about? It's not about what you did last year. It's about your resume this year. Like, what are you doing? Okay, okay. He's right. Thank Ob- you. Obviously, the Miami men making the Final Four last year doesn't translate when you have a losing record and end with 10 losses in a row. It's not about last year. It's about pedigree. It's, it's, we're it's having two different conversations. For the women, yeah, what you do in recent years does Absol- actually matter. And absolutely. It, but it and shouldn't. It, the measurement is I, this year. I understand, right. but it's taken into consideration all the time when you have these blue blood programs on the bubble. It right. is. And, and they weren't even a bubble team. Bracketology had them uh, the nine seed last time I looked. I mean, that's not even close to being a bubble team. Now, Laren Yeager, I don't know what his excuse is because when you look at that team. He had a lot of them. Okay, I know, but uh, you follow it closely, more closely Hold on, than I do. Hold on, let's hear from Laren Yeager on this. Let's just okay. hear and then have uh, your wheezing thoughts afterward. A very popular thing to do to put your name in the transfer portal. There are approximately 4,000 or a little bit more uh, Division One players. There's going to be 2,000 in the portal. That means half the players in college basketball are, are looking for a new destination. Does that make any sense to anybody? It doesn't to me. Because in my mind, a lot of those players that put their name in are actually, are actually saying, I'm giving up on myself. I have to go someplace else because I can't prove myself here. And... To a certain degree, that could be true. But on a lot of cases, those kids, as you get older, you get better. You know, my coaches and I talk about it all the time. How many, how many guys have transferred out of here and enjoyed greater success? Either their team won more or they became the star of the team like they envisioned when they left. So... You can look at the four that transferred last year and and tell me what you think. Um, I'm sorry, but they had a healthy team. I think their top seven scorers all played at least 25, 27 games. There's no excuse to end with a 10-game losing streak that turns you from a mid-seed back to defend your Final Four into an embarrassment with a losing record. It's just the way that season ended for them – was almost unheard of. I, I, I agree largely with your point. They they had a ton of injuries. They did not have a consistent lineup. I think they had the most starting fives, uh, different starting fives inside their own conference. They had very annoying, nagging injuries that happen all year long. That is an explanation. There there was tons of excuse making. I think in that post game press conference, a little red flaggy. I think it, to anytime you have an aging coach. Uh, just get on the pulpit and lament the transfer portal. But this team is actually not that far away, especially if Omir, who can come back, does indeed come back. If Pac comes back, they have one of the most prized recruits in the history of the athletics program, all sports, in Jalil Bethea coming in. He's a number two recruit in the nation presently. Make it bumped up to number one. They're not that far off. And so far, the, uh, the the people leaving were really kind of part of the problem when you look at on-court performance. If If – the 10 game losing streak is attributed to a team quitting on itself or on its coach. What would be the reason for that? Because 10 losses ago, they were absolutely uh, an NCAA tournament team. I'm confused by a couple of things here. I thought Poplar was going to be a lot better, and I thought that uh, you could offset the Wong Miller loss by getting Cleveland from FSU. Like, yeah. I really thought that was going to make some kind of difference. Uh, Cleveland was not the defensive fit that Jordan Miller was. Jordan Miller allowed them to do a lot of things defensively. Poplar, I loved him at FSU. Poplar, he developed a hitch in his shot. 
And we saw early in Poplar's career, he did not trust his shot. Kansas left him wide open. And then he had an unbelievable year, probably built himself into a lottery pick. And now he's at the point in his career where he may have to come back because of the the mental aspects of the game. Miami played a really bad brand of basketball. Five guys standing around the perimeter, taking the worst shots or turning the ball over. They played like they quit. This isn't a results thing. If you watch those games, these were horror you shows. Could, you couldn't lose more than 10 times in the 10 times that they played. <laughs> Greg Cody, I was a little bit disorganized here, and in the local hour, I didn't get to some things that you wanted to talk about, including what the Dolphins have done or not done in free agency. Uh, Tyreek Hill has recently said that we all owe Chris Greer an apology. I don't know if we owe the general manager of the Dolphins an apology for what it is that they lost early in free agency, but you feel how about how Dolphin free agency has gone? I think, you know, Christian Wilkins is a huge loss. That that, that loss leaves a, a crater in the defense. So I don't know if you can equivocate that because that's a that that's one of the biggest losses suffered by any team in free agency. But he's also one of the most overpaid guys, I'd say, in free agency. So I, it's I like, don't. Can I don't both think he be was, true. I don't think he was overpaid. Now Robert Hunt, twenty-seven was, per year. Robert Hunt was grossly overpaid. I think Wilkins got what he deserved, and what I hope the Dolphins might have uh, finagled and maneuvered to give him to keep him. But having said that, I think they've they've broken even on on the rest of their losses and gains. Uh, I, I think Jordan Brooks is, is going to be a, a nice uh, linebacker for them. They gave him the most guaranteed money of anybody. I think the sneaky good signing is Janu Smith, the, the, the tight end, who's been underrated, productive throughout a FIU kid, local kid, uh, underrated, productive in his career, coming off his best season in the NFL. I think that's a really good season because tight end's been a position for two years that has really underperformed in McDaniel's offense. I think the context matters here. If you just look at the names we lost and the names we added, then it's this is not a good offseason so far. But if you pay attention to the cap hell that this team was in, I think it's a I think it's very respectable what they did. Can, I think. Can you guys find for me how Fuller was as a corner, where he ranked last year, getting him for sixteen million dollars over a couple of years to uh, to replace Xavier Howard, who was great for them almost the entire time he played for them without uh, equivocation. I think that's a big loss. Yeah, less so lately though. The past couple of years, his game had had gone down, and he just is injured a lot. Yeah, he was injured a lot. I, I didn't. I wasn't particularly surprised when they released him. For cap reasons, but uh, but Christian Wilkins is the one that you, you you can't any no ifs ands or buts huge loss didn't really answer my question at all though about Fuller you did come <laughs> I, around I and make your point again about I Wilkins not, but I, I don't know the stats a point, so, tough I mean, spot for Greg Corny. I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't. I'm, I'm, I mean, he I'm wanted not, to talk about know, Dolphin you, free agency. You want the rank of Fuller pass. right off the top no, of his I, head? No, but I, mean, I just want. Look, I want from someone who's covered football for 50 years. Okay, is the longest standing member of any kind at the Miami Herald. I mean, well, you covered football for 30 years. How did Kendall Fuller do? It's a, it's a tough question. Thank I mean, you, Mike. Greg for the corn yep. king. Like you don't. <laughs> He knows corn. He doesn't know PFF rankings. Give us a second. Yeah. We'll try to find I mean, I don't you. cover the Dolphins full time, as you may or may not know. You wanted to talk I did about in 1990 Dolphin. and 1991, if you're being exact. You wanted to talk about Dolphin free agency. Right. And you're yelling at me because I don't know how Fuller ranked on right. the PFF I'm, rankings I'm, I'm of quarterbacks. He's the corn king, I'm, not the corner king. I mean, thank you. I am yelling at Great you. quarterback. I am yelling at you because. You don't know either. I am. It's not the <laughs> ranking that I want. I'm yelling at you because you are saying it's net even because they trade or they get rid of Baker and and they they replace him with a linebacker whose name you know from Seattle and you like and so you're saying that's a push and I'm asking you if Howard Fuller is a push. I think it's if if, if I'm looking at the stats, I think it's close to a push. Xavier Howard is a big name guy. Okay, but he's not as good as he was three years ago. The same with Jordan Poyer, the, the, the safety they, they got from Buffalo. He, he's a big-name player who's no longer a big player. That's why they get him on a, a cheap one-year deal. There were more of those this year than there have ever been, right? All of these contracts are a lot smaller in length than they've ever been. I don't recall this many one-year and two-year contracts for, for players like Poyer. That's a bit of a seismic shift in the way all of these people are doing business, right? 
I'm seeing him ranked eighth in the highest graded cornerbacks from last season, according, according to PFF. It was the second best year according to PFF. He had 83.1 percent. Wow. What was Howard? That's a different. Sorry, that's a different. That's a different Not in the top eight. I don't know, <laughs> Greg. Uh, well, geez, I, you know, I, I've memorized the entire list, but I've forgotten it. Moving on to other subjects, uh, I have noticed, as has Stu Gotts, that Omaha production, uh, uh, Omaha Productions of Peyton Manning and Eli Manning has gotten into the content game in a number of different ways. They're selling a lot of stuff to ESPN, Stu Gotts. They're doing a four-part uh, docuseries on Caitlin Clark, Kiki Rice, and Camilla Cordoso, and also because they're in this game as well. I believe they were involved with the quarterback series on Netflix. They couldn't get four more quarterbacks to do it, so they've pivoted to receivers. Wow, I love that. They are now doing receivers. It's Devontae Adams, Debo Samuel, Justin Jefferson, Amon Ross St. Brown, and George Kittle, which I would have saved for tight end. Different show. Seems like totally it's a, it show. seems like it's a t- different show, but George Kittle is also in there with wide receivers, and I'm pretty sure this show is only happening because they couldn't get any more quarterbacks. They got Kirk Cousins, <laughs> they got Patrick Mahomes, they got Marcus Mariota, and then they bailed on the whole thing because quarterbacks didn't want to do it anymore. But also yesterday in the content game, Stugatz, and I told you guys and you laughed at me. I told you J.J. Reddick's going to make more money in the media than he made as a player. Now he has signed up with LeBron James to do a podcast. And this one will test J.J. Reddick's theory because J.J. Reddick has been on first take and said, basketball fans don't actually want to be educated. Basketball fans want hot takes. They... They want something that is more general. Now, obviously, this is a generalization because there are a lot of people right now in the content game, Stugatz, that are fragmenting it. And there are a lot of people who don't who do want something vastly more informed than what just happened when I asked Greg Cody about corners like they do (laughs) want maximum information for their betting odds. They want to be smarter. You cannot be smarter than LeBron James talking about what they're going to be talking about, J.J. Redick, and this is the strength of LeBron James, that as opposed to the normal podcast way that we do this, where someone like a a black guy gets a white host to host the podcast and have that palatable to a broad audience, he gets a longtime veteran of the NBA, J.J. Redick, to host a podcast in which LeBron James is mined. We will have access to something that I will find fascinating, but is going deep in the weeds on basketball. And I do wonder, is this going to test J.J. Reddick's theory that basketball fans don't actually want to be broadly educated about what they're watching? Because the clips I've seen so far of what LeBron is doing is deep in the weeds, and basketball aficionados will love it, but the rest of us are going to be like, we don't know basketball this way. Well, Speak it, for yourself, Dan. It, it appears <laughs> that it was all recorded over like a certain block of time. So they're not talking about, you know, ESPN can be super reactionary with a, a play calling decision in the Western Conference semis. LeBron's not that available. So if you're going to make a podcast series going X's and O's in basketball, but all the X's and O's are in a vacuum where plays right. that once were, It'll be really digestible on social media. J.J. Redick and his video team with Jason Gallagher, they know how to do this, and that's why LeBron is partnering with him. I'd probably take exception to J.J. Redick hosting it because this is very much a collaboration between their two companies, but I would want more. I see that. I'm like, cool, do the late-game decision by the Orlando Magic last night. Let's do that. But unfortunately, they're not that available to me. I was thinking of Dan the other day. I was like, damn, you know what? Dan was right. I think J.J. Redick might make more money. (laughs) Hello, Dan. Are you excited about this? I'm so excited. I have I have many thoughts, and I can't wait to hear all of yours. Uh, well, we've already started. That's uh, Charlotte Wilder, and we're oh. having her on because I have heard a lot of people, Stugatz, uh, criticizing the documentary on Apple. It's very big, uh, the dynasty about the New England Patriots. It's 10 episodes and charlotte worked as a staff writer for the boston globe from 2014 to 2016 and i heard some initial criticism about brady being boring or aaron hernandez stuff being glossed over but the most recent emotional criticism i've heard is a lot of boston fans are not happy at what they view in the last two episodes as a hatchet job on bill belichick on 
blaming Bill Belichick for everything went wrong. So I have not seen the last two episodes of this 10-part series, Charlotte. Thank you for joining Mm -hmm. us. What were your thoughts? Thank you for having me, Dan. It's so funny being on this side of the the Zoom screen. Um, You know, my thoughts, it's funny because, I first of all, I thought it was a very entertaining documentary. Like, I was really glued to it. It was also nostalgic for me because the early parts of it were, you know, I was in high school and this team came out of nowhere and was suddenly good. And we were like, oh, my God, this is incredible. Uh, But then the second part of it, I was like, this is my career. And I, I largely think a lot of my the reason I was able to have a career in sports media is because I knew so much about the Patriots and they were the main story all the time. Like working at boston.com during deflate gate, a super bowl and the Aaron Hernandez trial was absolutely in. We had to buy chart beat measures, uh, the traffic on your website, we had to buy the next level of chart beat because we had so many clicks. Like it didn't matter how you could write like one sentence. If the headline had deflate gate in it, it was like, the best thing anybody had ever read. <laughs> and what did the documentary teach you? And uh, I don't think you came close to answering my question about sorry, whether, or not, whether or not Belichick was treated fairly in it. Uh, I don't think Belichick did himself any favors in it. Part of me, I, so so for those of you who haven't seen it, basically Belichick is sitting there and it is very clear that he does not want to be sitting there. It's like one of his press conferences. And in the doc, over the course of the doc, you see his communication style completely change like up in from in the beginning parts he's joking around he's open with people he's talking to reporters and then it becomes we're on to Cincinnati which they did not include in the doc and I was like well that's his greatest quote of all time but um I think that I sort of admire Bill for not feeling the need to defend himself I think that Kraft's you know the filmmakers have said that Kraft did not have final say over this But there is a very heavy craft slant to this because how could there not be the power dynamics of the team owner, not only the owner of the team, one of the most powerful people in the NFL, one of the most powerful people in the country sitting there telling his version of events, who's going to go up against that? And I'm not saying Kraft didn't tell the truth. He just told his version of that. And and, and his version of that was that he really threw Bill Belichick under the bus. So I don't know how you're going to get anyone to go up against him. And I, I think the power dynamics of the doc were the, the main issue with it, to be honest. Did you find yourself recoiling on Belichick's behalf? Did you find yourself saying, this is not fair, this is crafted by craft? I mean, yeah, there were moments. Like, I think when they talk about Deflategate, about saying that Bill threw Tom under the bus, they didn't mention that Bill was the one who introduced the ideal gas law into the conversation in a press conference in January uh, I forget if it was, I think it was 2015, um, where we're 16. I don't know, guys, time is a social construct. Um, but he was the one who was like, you know, when you heat the ball up and he put up this bogus scientific theory that was not true, uh, but that made everybody in New England a physicist for a second, um, which is my favorite part of the whole debate. And the media, thing, the, the media. That. I remember yes. reading, uh, reading a little bit of Ted Wells and all of a sudden I knew all sorts of things about <laughs> gas law I didn't know before. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The Wells report. Like, I cannot stress to you, like Ted Wells in 2016 in New England would have had to enter the witness protection program. The amount of people who knew who this investigator for the end, like this was such a huge deal. This was like the backdrop to anything happening in New England, even if you didn't like football. This was just like in the air. Literally, it was a gas law. Ha ha. Um, but it was it was nuts. It was nuts. And I, I think I did I did find uh, some of the criticism of Bill pretty heavy. But I also think Belichick largely did that to himself because he did create this pretty hostile environment where I've talked to players who played there in that season. And they were like, it was absolutely horrible. But you went there because you would win a ring. And that's what Devin McCourty says in the doc. He's like, you know, winning was the was the reward and Ernie Adams, uh, you know, Bill Belichick's football genius, even though Bill's also a football genius. He was like the, you know, people talk about like not having fun. Like you have fun when the confetti's falling after you won the Super Bowl. You've got Bob Kraft quoting Giselle after he invites the Brady's over to his house. Uh, that effing Belichick, he doesn't treat my Tommy like a man. <laughs> yeah uh show of hands who not not to say that mr Kraft isn't telling the truth 
I mean, I'm going to need another source saying that she actually said that. That sounds like a perfectly crafted, get it, line. Um, because I don't know. I then that was that was my problem with the doc. A lot of the things that Kraft said, it was just like, yep, he said it. And even when he talks about, you know, his sort of not rags to riches story, but he's like, I was able to buy this team because of my hard work. And I turned this paper company like his wife, Myra Kraft, her family, the Hyatt family, H-I-A-T-T in Worcester, Massachusetts, had a fortune from her father's packing company. And Bill bought, I mean, uh, excuse me, Robert Kraft had a 50% interest in that. And that is the capital that he used to be able to buy an NFL team. You can't like you need so much money to buy an NFL team. And at the time it was the highest uh, price anyone had paid for it. So there were a lot of things where it's like, he, we weren't, we weren't getting lies, but we also weren't necessarily getting like the full fleshed out truth, which I also understand. Cause this was a doc that was meant to entertain people who weren't like as in the weeds on my craft as I happen to be. I'm surprised by the reaction because I figured all Boston fans, Patriot fans just figured the same thing. Yeah. Belichick was the reason this dynasty broke up. Right. I mean, I was pretty surprised too, Stu, but I was also surprised. I think that when, you know, when it's one of your own, as a lot of people in new England think of, of Belichick, it's like, <laughs> it's like, well, like we can criticize him. You can't right. like, well, how dare you take down this guy who gave us six championships and who everybody I've seen so many people be like, and the defense in, in that last Super Bowl win. And I'm like, that was the worst game ever to watch. But yes, Bill, it was his Mona Lisa. Like we'll give him that. Charlotte, it's hard for me to believe that irascible, curmudgeonly Bill Belichick was agreeable for this project. What do you think? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I feel like that was, he was still the coach of New England. He sat for that interview before the 2023 season. And I feel like this was very much a craft directive of like, I don't know this for sure. I, this is speculation on my part. I feel like there's probably a, you will sit down for this and you will do it. And Belichick treated it the way he's treated his whole career, which is that he does not feel the need to defend himself. He didn't, he didn't get into it. And a lot of people have compared the dynasty to the last dance and I think there's a huge difference there because in the last dance, you had players going at it like, you know, Michael Jordan would say something. Horace Grant would say something. Scottie Pippen would say something. It was fun. They were all into it. They were all playing on the same level. And then for this, you really just had Bill like taking the punches and not fighting back, which I think is actually a very smart PR strategy because look at the response. He's almost done more for his image in taking it in this dock for, for people in New England than he could have anywhere else because, like, look at the last four years of the Patriots. It was not good. I will tell people, having been involved in some of the negotiations around Jerry Jones's 10-part documentary on Netflix, that I can almost assure you that Belichick only sat down for that because Bob Kraft and the top of Apple said, we'll give you maximum ability to have access to our entire team because Apple is spending more on these things than anyone else making these big giant things with big giant brands and I'm guessing that Belichick lost whatever the power struggle was there you don't want to do this interview too bad you're going to do these interviews whether you want to or not what else did you learn though that you didn't know Charlotte um I feel like a lot of stuff I had ideas about, but I think that they confirmed a lot of things. I think Brady saying like, yes, I was fed up. I think Kraft saying, you know, that last Super Bowl did save Bill's job. Basically, I think um, stuff in the beginning I found really, really interesting. Um, you know, I've talked to Drew Bledsoe before. He actually told me that after that Super Bowl, he went skiing and um, he in Montana, where he still has a place, and he was crying into his ski goggles on the chairlift, which is an image that will last with me forever because he seems like just a really lovely dude. Um, but I, I think that also um, the comparisons to how Bill handled the Bernie Kosar stuff in Cleveland and then to how gutsy it truly was for him to stick with Brady when Drew Bledsoe was the golden boy, you know. There, there were there were little things like that 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 were confirmed. Um, I also think that just how much 
players hated playing for him for Bill later uh, in the dynasty, if you will. I think I had inklings of that again. I had talked to players before, but for them to say that, like, that's a very public, that's a, that's a big thing to say publicly that a lot of people are going to see. So they really had to mean it. I need to get unfiltered honesty from Charlotte Wilder on her level of embarrassment and shame that her co-host on Oddball uh, is now having his integrity impugned by others, his credibility <laughs> impugned by others, because his jump shot and, more, spe more specifically, his follow-through have now diluted the credibility of his takes. What are your thoughts, Charlotte, on what happened here with the spasming at the end of Amin's fingertips and the air ball? Okay, so first of all, I, I've got to stand by my co-host. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say what he said, which was, "Oh, you haven't ever had a bad moment," which I think you can all imagine. I mean, saying also, I my hand has been known, like I've just like thrown stuff at people before. I was eating a biscuit the other day, and I just like threw a piece of it at my husband. He was like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "I'm so sorry. I have no idea. I lost control." So I don't think <laughs> I'm the right person to like fully. Um, were you Land angry? Because I think the internet has done no, that. Yeah, well, you're a good teammate, but uh, not a great interview in that you're leaving him uh, unscathed here when he deserves scathing. But why did you throw a biscuit at your husband? I don't know. That's what I'm saying, Dan. Like, my hand just spasmed, and I threw it. And he was like, whoa. And I was like, whoa, I'm so sorry. Which is why I'm just being honest about the place that I'm coming from. That is one of the funniest videos I've ever seen. I saw that. I was dying laughing. I was like, oh, I mean, like, yes. no way. Of course. Like, of course. Of course he got caught on camera having this happen. He, on Oddball, alleged that there is no way to confirm it is him. But, I mean, we, come on. Speaking of That's physics, amazing. speaking of physics, how does he follow through to the left and, and the it goes ball outside? Goes yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Circle change. Circle change. Where would it have gone without that follow through? Ramadan guys. I think there is like some wild spin on that. Right. Like that's how that has to happen. The wild spin know. was yesterday when he came on the air and said it was a win for him. Like that was ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, that's like he would have done really well in the Patriots press conferences. <laughs> Charlotte, good seeing you. Take care. Thanks, guys. Greg Cody, do you have a back in my day today? I don't. It's March. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I spent He's right. Yeah. I spent so much energy in, you know, thinking about my bracket, mm -hmm. uh, preparing a popcorn recipe. There was just so much going on in my life this past week. It's March. It's yeah. March. Pre yep. Preparing a bracket. Preparing I was a preparing a, my bracket. A popcorn recipe. Yeah, I've got a. You know, I don't fly by the seat of my pants here. I, I prepare uh, as I do for the show, as I do for my own podcast, the Greg Cody Show, uh, out now wherever you get your podcast, featuring and, Greg Cody. Well, with, with yeah, with. fine. But uh, yeah, the, the the popcorn thing and and bracket the bracket. I want to nail the bracket. I want to get a hundred percent this year. Mm -hmm. Came close last year, so you know. Greg, why? What are you doing, do. Greg? What are you doing? You didn't come close He's to getting a hundred percent. Like, what are you talking about? I, it, why, why is it that you come in here and you're just spewing gibberish about preparation? You don't prepare for anything. I do. I sit in the meetings. You don't sit in any of the meetings. I you stand. Board <laughs> you're outside during the meetings, and on top of that, <laughs> you come in here, and you, you're damn near 70. You don't run, and you think you can run a six-minute mile. Only because uh, I did a, a charity 5K a couple of years ago. A couple uh, of years ago. Uh, no, granted, Dad, it, that was before I was born. Granted, it was half running and half walking, <laughs> but when I was running, I felt like I was on a good it pace. It depends on how fast you go. You uh, you at least start out your mile because then maybe you can afford to walk the, the tail end That's as you beat six minutes. Right. No, no. Maybe he's like super fast the first three-fourths of it, and then he, can, he no. has time to spare to leisurely <laughs> stroll. Don't underestimate me. That's all I'm saying. I may not look like it, Greg, but I'm going to underestimate you on getting 100% of your NCAA picks right. I said almost. And running a six-minute mile. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and feel very comfortable <laughs> underestimating you there. Right, Who well, do you like you in the know, East? Do it in your own peril. Who do you like in the East, Greg? You know, I'm, pre I'm He's in preparing. preparation. He's preparing. Oh, He's oh, not okay. yet prepared to Get answer that to question. Of the last. He's too busy preparing for the show and preparing his popcorn oh, recipe. I mean, you know, three of the... Uh, 
three of the representatives from the Final Four last year are all in that region. Not sure what happened to the fourth. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Cody, can you update us on what it is that we're doing in our tournament that's better? Well, it can't be worse than what Billy did yesterday. Can you update <laughs> us better on what our tournament is? Because we're getting a lot of backlash, and I'm not surprised by this at all. The Looks Like tournament is very popular. And Billy, as he likes to do, has made a mess of something. So uh, how many songs do we have? Uh, we have one song bracket. How many songs can we give the people? Because we're not even tying this to the games this year, are we? Well, we kind of are roughly, but the winners will be decided by our fans this year. We are tying them to games. We will have matchups, but fans will decide the votings. Not the the voting. Fans will vote and they'll decide who wins. Exactly. We have four regions this year. In the past, it's been all looks like. This year, we have Greg Cody songs. Greg Cody moments, Greg Cody songs in one category. We have the club sounds in one category. We have bracket of death, the best costumes in one category. And then we have regular songs, the rest of the songs. There's Greg Cody, and then there's songs. Greg Cody is in both Who of those two categories. Who planned this? If it's all Billy? It, it was a team effort, but yeah, yes. There's a committee, Dan. It, it, uh, Greg, it, you have an entire bracket. It I'm will all make honored. sense. It will all make sense. We will tweet <laughs> out the bracket. or a commit me. You you're will trying see, to commit me. You're trying you to will. get me to commit it because, I'm, because you're making this messier and messier than it needs to be. One of our signature most popular things. It's not messy, really. There's a song. We're, right now, we're going to do the first thing we're going to preview right here is from the song region, okay? Yeah. Two, it's a play in game. Two 10 seeds. The first song is. Franco Harris. Trying to get away. And his pass. Great mistakes made on our show, Chris Cody, right. thinking I, I still can't believe it. It's a bit. Someone. No, it was like it was. It couldn't it be less than a bit. I can't believe it. So that is one ten seed, and it is. I was beginning to explain what it was. I was beginning to do that. For those who might not know, there are still those out there that his name, the famous running back's name, is not Frank. O'Harris. I and can't believe he is that. not Irish. It's unbelievable. It's an unbelievable it's a totally mistake. I understand why Chris Cody was trying to move right past it, but it's a flatly unbelievable mistake. What is that playing against? That is playing the other 10 seed Duncan Robinson song. Oh. And here's to you, Duncan Robinson. We all love how much your game has grown. Whoa, oh, oh, you're hitting threes, Duncan Robinson, cutting and dishing to our big O. That's Orlando in Toronto. All right, so that is the play in in our songs region. And now the play in games that we have in our Greg Cody region are also songs. <laughs> Two 16 seeds. Greg and his wife singing Tell Me It's Cold Outside. Oh, God. I slept in too late. Well, I took the dog outside. <laughs> now I will be raised. Your laziness, I will chide. A little heads up. Just look it up for yourself. Would have been nice. Why is technology your vice? It's cold enough for snow flurry. Greg, you could Google it in a hurry. I feel the chill rush to the door. The high today is 74. Why couldn't you say? There's no need to tell you that it is cold outside. Were you there that day?
that day, Chris, when your dad criticized your mother for not telling him that it was 75 degrees out because he wanted a warning? On it's an all-time Greg Cody. <laughs> just take and just ridiculousness. So that 16 seed is competing against another Greg Cody song. And, of course, that is called the Greg Miss song. The classic. My nuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at my ass. Yuletide carols. All right, enough of this. Being sung what? Enough of this. Oh, Beautiful. Disrespect to a 16 seed. Mm -hmm. So the wow. listeners, you will see in the next coming days, on our social medias for your chance to vote on this. We will release the entire bracket so you can see how it's all laid out. I'm telling you, it's much more easier to understand than we've presented. Great, it great. I love that days. about us. But I think uh, the great. fans will enjoy being able to vote for this type of stuff. And as the tournament goes, we will update it. So those two songs are in the Greg Cody bracket, not in the song bracket. I like Correct. It. I right. can't lose. Yep. It's just all about Greg Cody. Greg he couldn't be happier. Greg. He's been drifting wow. for the first two hours of the show, but we have his attention back Damn now. Right. Uh, and Greg I bracket. It's my new nickname. No, it's not the Corn oh, King. I was getting no. used to that. Yeah, Greg, it's Greg Bracket. Uh, please reconsider, Greg Corny. <laughs> and by the way, March Sadness is presented by Get Your Guide. Discover over 100,000 unforgettable travel experiences in the U.S. and around the world at GetYourGuide.com. So what happened to March Sadness? The woke mob got it? I don't know. Why would your new nickname be Greg Brackett? Almost 100%. Yeah, two I mean. syllables fits. You know, if you wanted to chant it, the chant would remain the same. That's always my first thought when crafting a nickname. You know. How would the chant go? Bracket, bracket, bracket. Right. Seems a little fast. We yeah. want you, bracket. You don't want that backing up your brackets, certain quarterback. Brackets, 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 brackets. That's much about Greg Bracket. Oh, I like that. Greg Bracket. Greg Bracket. Oh, I thought we were going to keep going. Sorry. Do like Goldberg. Bracket. Stugatz is saying that Belichick is just going to go to Philadelphia games this year and start chants at Sirianni. That I, it's Greg and I were discussing this. Belichick, who I think desperately wants to get back into the NFL as a head coach, not a coordinator, he should go to one of those places. Uh, San Francisco was throwing that idea yeah, around. Belichick is a coordinator. Uh, San Francisco, yeah. the audacity of their coach <laughs> to think Belichick like, would want to hey, come there. Come on. Come on. I'm serious. Come Kyle on. Shanahan said that. Come on. I, come on. I am as a strength coach. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I have him as an Eagles fan. He goes to every Eagles game, okay? He wears a Philadelphia Eagles jersey, and every time they're down 7 to nothing. He gets the chant started. The Belichick chant, the Nick Sirianni's <laughs> chants, all the great, and he gets it started. Not I a, love that not, idea. But Sirianni and Belichick both make the two-syllable thing hard. <laughs> they do. Yeah. They, I mean, Nick sucks, I suppose, is what they could <laughs> oh, do yeah. if you want to make it very simple. But you need it to be two syllables. As Sirianni is too wordy. Sirianni's going to hurt you in that haiku challenge as well because he's it's too many syllables. Yeah, four syllables on one name. I did it with Laren Yeager, though. Laren Yeager weeps. Right? It was your greatest contribution today. Thank yes. you. <laughs> the Laren Yeager haiku. That's right. Do we have any betting odds uh, circulating around the office on the Corn King, uh, who nobody knew was the Corn King before today, and who had to prepare his recipe because he's kind of winging it, and he just wanted a cooking challenge, and I don't believe he's actually somebody who makes popcorn regularly. I just think he <laughs> thinks he's good at everything. He thinks he can run a six-minute mile. He thinks he can cuck, uh, kick 50-year-old field goals. 50-yard field goals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I said cuck there. And I got scared of myself. Yeah, uh, you should have. Yes. Uh, you don't have a popcorn recipe, do you? Certainly I do. Yeah, absolutely. It's tried and true. I um, 
tinkered with it a little bit last night. We had a taste test involving my wife. I gave her a couple of different options. Uh, you know, do I want to use oil? Do I want to use butter? Do I want to use ghee? Prepping. Wow. It's, it's, it's pronounced ghee. Ghee is ghee. Ghee. Okay. So how did it go? It went well. Uh, she gave me uh, a preference on a certain item that I was wavering on and blah, blah, blah. You know, these are all proprietary secrets. So um, that's why. How I'm, confident are you? Oh, I'm quite confident. Yeah. <laughs> you always are, right? Yeah. About everything. Well, I try to be, but, you know, ever since Roy Bellamy's turkey beat my turkey, right. you know, I've been knocked down a peg. Hmm. So now I, I have to get back up, you know, but uh, I prepare. I prepare more than the average bear. And, um, you know, I just, I, you know, we just have to get to <laughs> it. making himself laugh. Uh, yeah. The odds makers back here in the shipping container have a Dan minus 250, Greg Cody wow. plus 300. Oh, that's right. a wow. value play right there. I don't, Man. Mean, wow. I don't mean to cut this contest off at the pass, but I have concerns about the integrity of this contest. Wow. Well. I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> How no, so? I do. Well, I mean, it's not a blind taste test, and... You know, oh, the power dynamics? Yeah, our ah, panel of judges. I right. That's fair. I mean, earlier Both today, the boss, right. I overheard Dan uh, in a coterie, uh, you know, talking about this career is, advancement and everything. This is all made and, up. This is not <laughs> true yeah, I mean, in any you know, way. I'm not, I, I, can't, I can't offer someone a raise or a promotion if they vote for my yeah. pop. I mean, we can't ignore that that is the elephant in this room Thank you. at the moment. Yes. But I was talking about your attempts at espionage, mm -hmm. which I rebuffed. But I don't know if you were successful in approaching other people yeah. to get intel on on Dan's recipes. Um, I, okay, let's let's open that can. Of well, work. we I, I think more context is needed because he kind of told me what he was thinking of doing, and I was like, I don't know what Dan's recipe is, but I've heard rumors of certain things, okay. and I think that might be what Dan uses. Yeah, my sole uh, uh, reason for bringing it up was to avoid overlap. Uh. Okay, the last thing I want is to have two competing popcorns Fair. that are eerily similar. That's actually a pretty good defense yeah. of yeah. your attempts yeah. at espionage. And, and it's the truth as well. Mine, totally distinctive. It'll be like nothing you've ever tasted before. Except it'll be just like mine. No. <laughs> it, I mean, it is popcorn. It's hard to... Well, first of all, it starts with the corn itself. Right. Well, and I use a you premium are, corn. You are the corn mm -hmm. gang. Yeah. I, that's, Don't that's, give it away, Greg. No, no, I, I right. wouldn't. I mean, at some point, I'll reveal... That are uh, available. I'm but, excited uh, about this. You know, it starts with the corn. Yeah. Let's put it that way. This is a really good line, by the way. Dan, your, your popcorn is exceptional, and I know how much pride you take in it, and I know how you don't want anyone across you with any criticisms <laughs> whatsoever. Just so you know, I'm voting for you no matter what. There you go. Just it's the, the way I like it. The fix is just, in. I, I say that. The fix is I'm in. I'm the Putin of popcorn, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I claim now that that's it's, a catchy nickname. <laughs> the Putin of popcorn. It's, I claim that it's democratic, popcorn but it's Putin not. Or Putin of popcorn. It's yeah. not. Yeah. I, I, Putin. I, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the video of Putin playing hockey, but this is what they're accusing uh, me of doing to the popcorn contest, where Putin plays hockey against a bunch of Russians and weaves yeah. between six players who are like clearly, they're clearly letting him <laughs> score. Yes, yeah. it's, it's, it's akin to Steven Seagal, in, Steven Seagal in that martial arts competition, <laughs> taking on all, all comers. <laughs> we'll get to the pop-off in a second, but uh, Chris Cody, uh, yesterday you promised us, we never got to it, uh, but you promised, here's the Putin video, of him just scoring unchecked in the middle of the ice, much smaller than all the other players, and he scores every time he wants to because uh, he's amazing. You'll pr you promised us yesterday, though, an update to the scandalous Oktoberfest uh, bathroom bar toe that snuck out from underneath, um, you know, a public <laughs> restroom. I can't oh, lie. God. That's a clean finish I, by Putin. <laughs> really? <laughs> like the five hole. Like He's got a sneaky good. I know, but finish. there wasn't there wasn't a lot of interference in front of the net, no. the yeah. kind you'd usually expect in front Look, of a goaltender. Yeah, but he went top that. shelf. I, I understand mean. that, but that wrist action you cannot fake. Right. Do you think the goalie was processing, if I save this, I die? Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> some of that. Yes. Yeah. Half that team fell out a window <laughs> after the game. Chris Cody, what is the update that you're promising us? Uh, for those of you who do not remember his uh, what is alleged to be his famed Oktoberfest toe, uh, Chris Cody has since retracted that this is his foot. It is not his foot. I mean, my foot is clearly in this picture here. You can see my knee. I'm taking it. 
it. And this guy's foot came into my <laughs> stall, <laughs> and I took and I did what one would do in that moment. I took a photo of it, and I showed it on air, thinking, <laughs> "What are the odds that this guy, if like he ever sees this, like what's he gonna sue me? Hey, that's my foot." So I'm at the Panthers game the other night with a buddy, and as I'm walking by somebody, some guy just goes, "Hey, that was my foot." At Oktoberfest. No and my instant reaction is, that's hilarious. That's a good, like, listener of the show. That's good just, callback. Yeah, like, that's hilarious. And he goes, no, seriously, I'll DM you. And I, and, I, and I have this moment where I walk back away <laughs> with my friend. I'm a little scared because the guy, he, he kind of was smiling, but he had a look like, I'll punch you in the face. Okay. So I was like, I should, if, if that's really him, I should go back there and get a video of him. And for the sh- I'm like, got my mind into, like, content mode. And I'm like, maybe he's messing with me. But if it's true, he'll DM me. So I just kind of like went about my business, and I'm like, all right, maybe this guy will DM me. Next thing I know, I get a DM, and he's basically like, it's me. And he shows me a screenshot of his Oktoberfest ticket on the same day I was there. Not proof yet that, that it's his well, foot. Well, all he's got to do is send you his foot. That's Dan. I'm a, I'm a journalist. I respond to him, I need to see the toe for me to believe it was (laughs) you. Now it's like creepiest, the creepiest possible sliding into the DMs. Foot, 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 foot. And he responds to me, as much as I want to send feet pics to men over the internet, I'm going to pass it, pass at this time. Wow. No, that's not not proof. Here's the next best thing. And he sent me a picture of his sandal, of the sandal that is in that stall. So as far as I know... The guy is a list. He's like big fan of the show. What are the odds that the guy that I did this to six months later <laughs> is like, hey, right. it's me. I've got a number of questions. So this guy's personal moral compass on how far <laughs> he's willing to go. He's got no problem telling you to your face. I'm the person so inconsiderate that I sprawl out when and stick my feet I get wide. in other people's stalls. Proud I have no it. problem yes. admitting that. <laughs> I will prove it to you with a ticket stub and a flip-flop. What I will not do... Here's where I draw what, the line. What I will not do is show you what would be the ultimate proof, which is an identical foot with a crooked second toe. Yeah. I will not Terrible. send that to a man. Perhaps you should give him your wife's um, DM. Whoa, 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 whoa. You do that. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, did. Yeah, absolutely Why don't you did. FaceTime yeah. him or toe-time him? Now, can we put the foot back up there? Because in the can, way... Oh, do we have to? The way that I took this in the first time to me that's a hispanic foot <laughs> really whoa. to me i mean what whoa. am i, am I what are you whoa. doing whoa. there no, i'm just that's saying it's just like the, sh- the tone like that most my foot is pale and like that's a tan like i don't know like, that second toe is part of a means hand on the follow-through yeah. the second toe is really crooked and the only reason i bring up that i this guy couldn't I mean, have it, been, looked like, it looked like a white foot to me this uh, okay maybe it. This definitely this, looked like a white foot to me. Yeah, I mean, the, the great yeah. toe is beautiful, yeah. and the other four toes you are You know how I know that's a white foot? Because it's wearing thong flip-flops at an Oktoberfest. That's how I know it's that a white foot. That is a telltale foot. sign. <laughs> that is a telltale sign. Well, the guy I never once considered it was anything but a white foot, considering the context. The guy couldn't have been whiter. Is that second toe digging into the ground for maximum leverage on whatever it is that's happening inside that stall? Been there. It is the uh, broken. Just so you know, it's a, it, we're approaching the 20th anniversary of this show. Could you message this gentleman and find out if he's open to an activation <laughs> in which we bring listeners into a stall and they can sit down and experience it live and in person yeah. for themselves? Part of our many, uh, p- part of all of our planning that's yeah. going to go into our 20 year anniversary where we bring in just an assortment yeah. of, of, of well, circus oddity. I've been workshopping. I should probably talk to you about it. Do we want to do a lot of little ones or maybe one big one? But either way, This toe has to be a part of it. I think I want it to be as weird as possible. Highly a movie co and waiting for you in one inside (laughs) one of those souls is that foot. Greg, what did you say? Toe what? Well, toe man is the nickname I've just developed for him. Greg, your nicknames today have been really terrible. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, sometimes you don't want to yeah. think too hard. Greg Brackets? I mean, come Greg on. Greg Bracket, Toe Man. <laughs> Outside of Putin a popcorn, right our, nickname, <laughs> our nickname game is lacking. Because Toe Man lends itself to a Batman-like sing-along. Toe Man. Toe Man. A little music in the background, you got a song. 
Bam. Right. After this like foot that. segment, let's eat some popcorn. What would Toe Man's powers be? <laughs> I'm in the be? mood. Uh, <laughs> he can fly. <laughs> he wiggled. He's, my dad used to always say if he could wiggle his ears, he could fly because his ears were so big. And it would be a similar thing with Toe Man. You know, if that guy starts going like this, all of a sudden he'll have This is the new and unimproved Dan Levitar show with the Stugats. Gamble on by DraftKings. The pop-off has begun. Greg Cody is with me in studio. Dan is up at the, uh, he's in a hotel room somewhere. He is, he looks very comfortable in a kitchen. He really does. He has started the process of making his popcorn. Greg, you've been observing what Dan is doing. What are your thoughts so far? Well, I think he is going to get and deserves some credit for doing it old school. Doing it old school. He's not, I'm using a microwave without apology. Mm -hmm. But I will get some points deducted by people who prefer the old school method. So we'll see if I can overcome that. All right. So, Dan, again, he's in the hotel. He's in a room. He is in the kitchen. He is currently making popcorn. Let's go up to Dan. And uh, he's holding something up. I have no idea. It seems like a secret ingredient. Let's go to Levitard and find out. I am uh, hidden away at a secret location, 46 floors <laughs> above the earth. I have an assortment of different ingredients. I will say, though, there is something of a strategic advantage that Cody now has that might resemble excuse-making by me, but I have two things at play that are uh, I was not expecting. First of all, this stove is not something I've worked on before, and I'm not sure about the heating levels. And then more <laughs> disastrously... Uh. I, I, I have forgotten an ingredient at home. I have an ingredient at oh home boy. that's missing. I was horrified. Oh yeah, I was horrified to look. At, yeah, it, I left it on my oven at home. Uh, on my How important home, is rather. this ingredient, yeah. though? In, in terms of all your ingredients, I, I, where would you list this one? It's, it's the least important, okay. but it's a connector. It's an important connector. Oh, wow. So uh, this is, Excuse I can machine. hear the sizzling, though. Uh, no, uh, fair enough. Fair commentary by you guys, but I think I'm still going to win because microwave popcorn. How good does that smell? Oh, my God. This smells good. I know you can't I don't smell know. it there, but I've got, we've, we've got a team of people here. They're nodding because it smells good already. We can't smell it down here. What's it smell like? Popcorn? I gathered. I gathered. <laughs> it smells a lot like a, a gourmet popcorn. Delicious popcorn. Yes. Very concerned about this missing ingredient that is, quote, a connector. We're, we we got to play it as it lies, though. Me Dan, too. This Dan is just one moved that's... to 115 in my book. Yeah, a lot of late action. <laughs> Minus 115, the corn king. What was Cody before the pop-off? Plus 300. It's great actually value. moving down right wow, now. Wow, great value. You're the favorite. Plus, live, you go second. Live betting odds. Yeah. <laughs> the bets are rolling in for me. That's why the line's changing. Uh, Dan, do you feel like I have time to do top five people in sports that can have popcorn while you're uh, making your popcorn? I think you do because I have not gotten a single pop yet, and I've been up here seven minutes. Uh, As I connector. said, I'm dealing yeah. with a, a – no, that's not the connector excuse. That's a Baki, <laughs> sto that's a Baki stove excuse. It's a, whole, it's a whole different set of excuses. Yeah, that's why you're supposed to use the microwave. It's an important one. <laughs> this doesn't happen with microwaves. Yours right. will be done microwaves in a minute. We're getting down to minus 110, minus 110 real quick. we got a pickup line. Yes. I mean, listen, there's nothing worse than missing a connector when you're cooking. I mean. <laughs> in, in, unless your missing ingredient is the popcorn itself, I don't want to hear any more excuses. Get his ass, Greg. Greg, Greg. Uh, Greg Cody, you sound just as bad 46 stories up as you did when I was sitting next to oh, you. This is getting personal. Just as wheezy. <laughs> wow. This is Jeez. quite the pop-off. Wow. Not his fault. You forgot your connector. <laughs> connector. Stop lashing out. Connector. I mean, <laughs> most people call it's, it salt. It's awful. <laughs> All right. Top five athletes in sports that connote popcorn. OLI. Colonel Reb. Mascot for the Mississippi Rebels. <laughs> Don't know how I feel about that mascot. <laughs> Oil can Boyd. <laughs> I know how I feel. <laughs> Dottie Pepper. Is that popcorn I hear? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do you mean? That's not popcorn. Pepper on popcorn? What do you mean Donnie Pepper? What, who puts pepper on popcorn? A lot of people do, Dan. Yeah. Might be a connector, Do as they? some would say. Yeah. <laughs> Don't give it away, Greg. Oh, no. All right, number five, Butterbean. <laughs> number four, Lisa Salter. There's an S in the S. Salters. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry to Lisa. It's like giraffe, giraffe, giraffes. <laughs> yeah, it goes either way. Number three, Tubby Smith. I, sorry, I just hear popcorn. That's why I got I got distracted there. Oh. Look at that thing. Look at that popcorn go, Dano. Number two, Greg Popovich. <laughs> and number one, Corn Elder. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> I hear popcorn, Dan. I mean, this is exciting. Uh, you do. Uh, yeah. Chris, Chris Cody, I need, if you don't mind, can you get me the filibuster, please, real quick, of the corn elder uh, call of Mike Ryan on the Duke Miami game? Just because I need a few more minutes of popping here because I got to get these temperatures right. I don't know if you can find that for me and if I can produce the show 46 stories up in the air at a secret location or not. I will say this a new stove is always a tricky game, a dangerous game at that. So. You're cranking up the excuse machine, but I understand why. I mean, oh, Ooh, look that's at that. Nice. That yeah. is so nice. That's a good visual. Oh, yeah. live line. Yeah. Back All down right. to minus 150 for Dan. That bruises the popcorn when it hits the, the <laughs> lid. <there. laughs> oh, Greg Corny. Spraying a lot of stuff in there, Greg. <laughs> yeah. Was that hairspray? What do you got in there? <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at this. It is. It's one of the secret in ingredients is hairspray. Yes. Uh, put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Levitard Show. Does anyone put pepper on their popcorn? Or hairspray. <laughs> because I built... Oh, this is good right here. Oh, my God. Is this good right here? Don't over-season it. Yeah, Christ it's too almighty. much, Dan. Yeah, what are you doing? Oh, he wants no. flavor. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 don't tell me how to do this. Okay. Don't over. I don't need. I, I know you guys think you can know. You know how to do everything and you can run a six minute mile yeah. and you can kick 50 yard field goals. Don't need your advice over here. I'm we'll just see fine. About that. This is the weirdest wrestling it. promo of all time. Uh, I'm not the one who forgot over a connector. 27 24, squib kick. Just fall down on it or whatever. No, they're going to try the lateral. Pass it to the other side of the field. This never works. Caught by Corn Elder. Pitches it back to Jaquan Johnson at the Miami 30. Delaying the inevitable. Looking for a block. Pitches it backwards. As many laterals now as BS pass interference penalties on that last drive. Walton now pitches it back to Johnson. Guess we're going to keep going with this. Toss it back. Here comes another pitch. Cornelder has it. Throws it back to the Plumbers 911 goal line. Dallas Crawford looking for a block. Gets one. Definitely not a block in the back. He throws it across to the 30 to Corn Elder. Big legal block. He's got it to the 40. Corn Elder crossing El Palacio de los Hugos midfield. Corn Elder speeding now to the 40. Speeding ticket. Fakehoward.com. Hold on now. Dashing down the Dandy Bear sideline. So what? Your kid has ringworm. Dandy Bear. Elder inside the Gus Machado red zone. Corn Elder. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. Lindy, Eric, Scotty, Mike, Miami, Sequarium. Touchdown. Presently, no flags on the field, and certainly no one will have a problem with how this game ended. Yeah. Oh, wait, we don't speak English, so everyone hates us. Oh. I hear something new every time I, I listen to that, That's and I brilliant. laugh at something new every time brilliant. I listen to that. Ringworm is what got me that time. Why do you keep spraying your popcorn? popcorn. I have popcorn. No, I'm not giving away any of the secrets. I'm ready to come back down, though. I have wow. popcorn all over the floor here. Hmm. I think I haven't tried it yet. Uh, John Reed, you want to stick your hand in here? <laughs> you want your hand? <laughs> One John Reed's hand. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. whoa, whoa. John Reed. Whoa. whoa. One finger. One. All right. You, know, you said stick the hand in that I mean, right. to mix it all up. All right. I'm bringing it down now. I'm all coming right, down right now. You guys ready for this? Oh, it's we are magical. Born ready, ready Dan. Yeah, it took you long enough. I when mean, we just... come back, Greg Cody will do his. We've got a handful of disasters going on. I've just walked into a room where Chris Cody is infuriated with his dad, and I saw uh, Stugatz chewing popcorn when I came in. <laughs> what? Which I, I don't think is the way we were supposed to do this. So, uh, and, and incidentally, I left a mess 46 floors upstairs because uh, the, uh, the stove uh, burnt into one of the plastics that I was oh, holding I things in. Oh, no. so, the bottom, oh. so the bottom of the popcorn fell out. Jeez. 
Uh, Chris, what happened with your father before we go to Jerry Seinfeld, Mexican Jerry Seinfeld in the kitchen? <laughs> what happened was is I'm annoyed because the whole point of this is the audience seeing the making of the popcorn, and he, I'm pretty sure he's already made the popcorn. We didn't get any of the popping sounds that we got with you. Let's We can go to him now. Greg, the popcorn's already made? Um, some of it. Uh, it's popping. <laughs> You'll hear the popping in about 30 seconds. Oh, you're <laughs> making multiple bags. Yeah. Okay. Micro uh, microwave popcorn is how you're making it, and you're just sprinkling some seasoning on it. So are you telling us any of your secret ingredients? Sure. I can. Uh, they're not secret. They're visible. I'm using um, Blue Jewel popcorn, which is the best. Hmm. I'm using um, Irish butter, which is the best. I'm using um, kosher salt. I'm falling asleep Lemon as I'm pepper, saying it. Which is the best. Which is the best. <laughs> and uh, very, very and Parmesan, grated Parmesan Ooh, cheese. Which, which is, is the, the best. best. I mean, grated. put it on the poll, please, Juju. Is grated Parmesan cheese the best? Yes or no? I You're nervous. My, I, finally, <laughs> I finally wrap my head around who Tony reminds me of today. He looks like John Stossel like this. Wow. wow. That's a great reference there. Old uh, old 2020 Who's episodes. Uh, it's sort of. He was sort of uh, Geraldo Rivera light without the politics. Yeah. He uh, got slapped in the face by a wrestler for exposing the business in yeah. 2020. It was a famous thing. You also, Tony, somehow look like you're straight out of a Beastie Boys sabotage video as well, uh, somehow. So everything but Seinfeld, then. That, well, you don't yeah. look you, right. you don't look anything like Seinfeld. How are we doing the taste test parts of this? Who are the judges and where are we on feeling you didn't do this again where it's four judges and we're going to need a tiebreaker, are yeah. you? Yes. Well, it's, Roy can't eat today. Okay, I had five. In my mind, it was going to be me Tony, Roy, Mike, and Stu Gatz. Boom, five, best out of five, but right. Roy is fasting five right now. Five totally impartial huh. judges. Hmm. So we're going to do what we did last time. If it is split after the four of us, we'll go to Coogs. Okay, and uh, I, I do really feel like there, there's something Coogs. cheap about going to the microwave I mean, for this. Not choosing right? Greg. This is, yeah, this is my, doing, microwaving the popcorn is barely trying. Like, it's not really trying. I mean, you guys have talked a lot of junk about each other. I'm really surprised at how hostile this has all become. I I'm got, also uh, not at all surprised that you screwed up on the stove and, and burnt a plastic receptacle. Now, have we, Dad, have you started seasoning yet? Because this is your second bag of popcorn you're throwing on there? This is the third, and uh, we're seasoning as we speak. Oh, nice. Oh, is that some melted Irish butter there? You're yes. drizzling? Mm -hmm. Nice. Dan, I'm kind of a fan of a lack of effort when it comes to popcorn, just in, out, and in my mouth. You, you know could have saying? ended that sentence a few words early by just saying you're a fan of a lack of effort. <laughs> <laughs> then you, we wouldn't um, have gotten in, out, inside my mouth. Right? Hey -oh! Sometimes you over-prepare the popcorn and you think too much, and it's not as good as you want it well, to be. Well, I, I will tell you that one of the things that makes me nervous here is that I'm always making my popcorn to be a healthy popcorn. So oh, I can't uh, use uh, cheese and popcorn. You I, lose. I can't use, I'm not, I'm at the disadvantage of I can't use cheese and butter. Those are not among my ingredients. What are you spreading right now, Dad? What is that? That, that was lemon pepper. Oh, wow. Whoa. Right. Yeah, all right. And now I'll what? this man out. And now what? Cheese, parm. Which is the best. His connector. It's pretty good, but it's not a connector. Uh, so what were you, you were spraying something that was top secret, but you you that was a healthy amount of spray yeah, that do you we were have, on there. I, that I'm, didn't look super healthy. I'm it being is. told we have B roll of Dan putting a crazy amount of seasoning on his food. It's not uh, it's not necessarily seasoning. Uh, it's uh, that is the seasoning. Yes, that's not crazy. That in fact it was too light by the time. You're still it, going. It was yeah. too light. Yeah, it was Jesus. too light because it goes five all more the way seconds. Yes. <laughs> My God. Yes, it, it's drowned in it. That's correct. That's exactly how you do it. Huh. I've got it. It's ready for anyone who wants to try it. I would, I would like Thanks, to try Dan. it, but are we going to do the, uh, the... Yeah, we have to do. Yeah. Is together. there more right. pomp and circumstance to this, or you're just going to put it in my mouth? I, uh... uh let's hey, bring uh, one of these bags in here. Uh, let's take both of the bags. You guys do this however it is that you want to do this. Well, no. That's the same batch because the colors look a little off. They do, yeah. Yeah, yeah Stu, you keep that one. Okay, I'll keep this. A lot of stuff in here. Let's, before we start tasting, though, let's go back out to my dad. Dad, are you doing your finishing touches? Where are we in your process? We are just about done. It's going to be ready to taste. All right, maybe put it into two different bowls so we can get one in here in our room and then bring one into it in there we with Dan. We didn't save any money on the cutlery there, huh? We went with the fine <laughs> china there. <laughs> Wow, these <laughs> these seem like really bold flavors. I'm gonna need a palate cleanser in between tastes. Yeah, some we're gonna need some cups of water if we could, folks. A little mousse bouche. A little mousse bouche. <laughs> we'll look at Greg.
Greg. <clears throat> I don't know, man. I'm trying. All right, so do we want to change the odds? Looking at Dan, seeing what my dad's done. Like, what do we think? No here? connector. I mean, new <laughs> stove. This is a pick'em line. Minus one ten. It has. It has Plug tightened up. Juice. I think it has tightened up a little bit. I mean, I've made a ton of excuses, so <laughs> I have already. I uh, and and on top of everything else, I can't tell you when I was cleaning up the burnt plastic. I'm like, man, this is what choking would look like at the height of what <laughs> sports feels like. <laughs> this is this is. I am choking. So I what have happened let, there? You just rested a plate on a, on a on a stove that was I'm, on. I'm using a stove I have never used before, and I had and and the gadgetry is. A a little bit confusing. It's got a lot of protective and plastic devices around it. <laughs> it's referred to as stove as gadgetry. It was. Yeah. It was I, I, if I showed it to you, there was a single, a double, a triple, and I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, okay. what? Why? Why? What, why Just am I going? Why I'll, am take, I going, I'll take your word for why it. Why am I going triple the heat on this? I don't need triple the heat on this. Wow. Now my dad is spooning the popcorn wow. into separate bowls for wow. each of us. Presentation. Wow. He yep. gets. He yes. gets the win here. The presentation <laughs> is winning. Minute. No doubt. You just I got my own dish. You just handed people like two bags. Ziploc bag. I didn't know that there was a presentation element to this. It's a contest. It's a pop off. I did. This was all taste, not Top Chef. It's not superficial. It's just taste. It's just give me gourmet taste. I'm not going to discount the presentation just because you did, sir. Yeah. Well, I can go out there and present it. You can't. You delayed. You tried to, and you burnt the plastic. I didn't know this was a beauty contest. I thought it was a personality contest. You choked. I did I'm choke. with Dan. This is not. There's no visual here. Whatever's in my mouth, that's what I'm judging. Well, I'm. Ah. It, it's like telling the jury there to just go. disregard what you just heard. Like they can say yeah, but in the back of their minds. <laughs> All right, I am. Uh, I am ready to be All tasted. Right, come back wow. into the studio. I don't think we're gonna need coogs. I gotta. They're be honest, bringing in so. a bunch of water here for us. So Stugatz has already decided where his vote is going because he's already <laughs> eaten Greg Cody's popcorn before he what? even seasoned it. Like this is the thing. Stugatz <laughs> just went in there and ate a plain microwave popcorn, and that's what he's gonna vote for. Like with no seasoning, just something, just <laughs> Orville Redenbacher's thrown in the microwave for ninety seconds. It was delicious. <laughs> all right. I guess now we all just kind of oh, dig in. Okay. All right. But where's how- Greg Cody? Greg well, Cody on, back no. in the studio. We can't just dig in. We have to do this. We try Dan's first. We try Greg second. Right? Okay. Yep. Because right. Dan's has been made longer. We don't want it to get stale. So right. we'll go to Dan's first. Roy, how uh, how long have you been fasting? Uh, this is a three day fast. This is the final day, which is pretty funny. So does this hurt? Now. Does this hurt? The smell of popcorn? Is it hurting you? My stomach hurts right now. Yes. Yes. I'm very hungry. Wow. Okay. Uh, can I try? I'm not one of Thank the voters, you, so I'd like to try Greg Cody's popcorn. It has like 17 ingredients you allege that you're allergic to. I will admit, and remember, I said I'm only going to judge on what's in my mouth. Dan's looks better. My dad's is like really white. Dan's got a nice tan to it. Presentation? Yeah, I'm just saying, based off the look, not the, I mean, the presentation is nicer for my dad because he's got a nice little dish for this. All right, Mike, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, we're trying Dan's first. Yeah. Dan's Which first. Is good. Well, uh, Greg's is good. It's oh. buttery and cheesy, but I'm not allowed butter and cheese. So, like, I'm... Excuse making. Cheater. Yeah. No, he's I'm not just, allowed I, it, but he's got to finish I, that cup. I, what I'm saying is that... Um, when I'm not allowed it, I'm going to have a bad reaction to how oh. wonderful that tastes. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Dan's uh, I'm dance. Having, having Dan's. This is a classic. One of my favorite popcorns on the planet. Some saying my favorite. Better than the other night, too. Better than Oscar night. Yeah. It tastes yeah. really good right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to tell you, if you are missing a connector, I can't pinpoint it. Mm-hmm. It does seem distant from each other, each kernel. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay, but how? <laughs> instead of just chewing, and, and are we, do we have some order to who's voting, how's voting? Everyone's well, eating I, at the same time. Are they all? Are all of you eating we're my eating, popcorn? We're all right eating now? We're all eating Greg. you right yeah. now. Right, right. right. Yeah. Greg's is good. I'm we've the got, only one. We've got I'm, you in our mouths right now. Yeah. You're voting for Greg. I mean, I'm I, marinating on you. I'm savoring I'm, your uh, flavor, Daddy. Your, it's good. I'm just sitting here. It's got a little kick to it too. Like my eyes are watering up a little oh. bit. Oh. Um, uh, I, I mean, mean, why? You've never revealed this publicly, but I'm certain there's like some coconut oil element to this. It's incredible. Yeah. Oh, that might, that might have been the binder that he's missing. No. There's connector. A, connector. That fun. connector. Yeah. If that's a connector, that's in there. That's great. I, I, I love that. Great. I love that popcorn. I'm ready for Greg. Do we all feel like we have you, it? You, sir, know how to make popcorn. Hmm. All right. Uh, but wait a minute. Are we going to get who? I, I just want to cover again because we want dramatic buildup in order for this to get the payoff. I uh, have uh, the palate cleanser coffee grounds right here. Ooh, the nice. voters <laughs> are, again, Chris Cody, the voters are... Stu Gatz, me, Mike Ryan, Tony. That's four of us. If we are split, we go to Coogs. 
Okay, right. so right now you're uh, rooting for a split. You want Kooks. Uh <laughs> No, I'm 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 pretty confident in my popcorn. But as the only one who has tasted Greg's, I will tell you that his has a moistness that mine does not. It's got a a buttery aftertaste that uh, feels like you're just uh, slurping sauce. And whoa, if, if you like, don't talk that, about it. Be about it. I'm eating it. How it, is it that the one guy that wasn't doing a thing had the most suggestive <laughs> sentence on the air? All right, we are moving on to Greg's popcorn. Corn. All right. Everyone put Greg okay. in your mouth. Greg, how do you feel about uh, your popcorn right now? How do you feel about the batch you made? Um, Delightful. I've had more of yours than mm. I've had of my own. Mm. Um, you finished mine. Greg I Greg, did. Greg crushed my popcorn. Yeah. Wow, crushed it. Yeah, this I lemon a, pepper? I have a critique, but... Um, oh, okay. This is good, Greg. This is really good. Thank you. Mm. I... I Oh, wow. I think the flavor was excellent. I think you did over season for me. Mm. Mm. The cheese in yours, Greg. Mm. The lemon's a little, t- it bites a little too much, though. I don't know if mm. I love the lemon I pepper in here. Part. Yeah, but I like that part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm Latino. I love mm-hmm. that. Do it more. Mm-hmm. I'm nervous. Mm-hmm. Well, I know who I'm voting for. Me too. Well, okay. I know who you're voting for. Like, I, I, you didn't even have to taste the popcorn. I think I need to go back. I know for which some more way you're voting. I know. I know. I, no, I, no, never I, know. No, I do know. When Greg Cody's here, you always side with him. <laughs> I do. I do know, though. It's the only consistent thing about the two of you. Well, I, no, that there, and it the is masters, missing. I mean. It is missing a little something by being a microwave batch of a uh, popcorn. Hmm. I uh, I would argue that that is uh, uh, cheap in a way that prevents it from being gourmet. You're throw, a true just, artist. Just throwing it into the microwave. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How about the fact that my uh, Black Jewel mm-hmm. gourmet popcorn is uh, ha- is virtually hull free? Really? Well, yeah. It's it's a hullless popcorn. Wow. Mm-hmm. They can't call it hullless because if you if you I know what you mean by that, but Chris doesn't. Can you explain it to him? I mean, you know the, the thank the, you for asking, Mike. The hull is the 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 portion of the popped corn that you really don't want to eat. The the one that gets stuck in your teeth, and you know what's it called? The hull. Oh, Asian. yeah, like bread, like yeah, Bobby like corn. Yeah. Popcorn hull. He just, uh, you may not have noticed this about Stugatz. He only asks the question so he can do the like Bobby thing. Bobby he hull. doesn't actually yeah, care it. what your answer yeah. is. He's just trying to. Guy in sports, he, like, he, you know, it's popcorn. Could have went bread hole. I mean, <laughs> that that would have been a good one. John Sossel is the youngest popcorn to reference. Yeah. Where were you three hours ago when I asked you? I mean, he I, missed. I've, I've gone back to Dan's popcorn. I am finishing this. He missed the timing on when the joke would have worked best, so he asks you to repeat it so that he can then do the clarification. And that too. No, it's just not. To make it's sure not, I heard it correctly. It's not a clarification. <laughs> you just missed your window and you circled back around because you wanted to make a Bobby Hall joke. Man, you I love those popcorn. Mm. All right, Stugatz. Stugatz votes for Greg Cody. Why Tony, for, Tony, who do you vote for? Hold on. This is tough. No, it's done. Why I don't. I don't about? need to hear. Uh, you could turn off his microphone. It doesn't I matter. I don't hear, hear it. Vote first. Wait, I'm voting first. I'll go first. Okay, uh, Stugatz has voted. He's for voted the, for Greg Cody. For the record, said, Chris, Chris is related to Greg. I'm voting for Dan. Hmm. I'm, I'm being honest. It's just the taste. I, it's, it's what I would go back. I, I just did. I, I closed my eyes. I said, if I was at a, a movie right now, which of these would I want to have? Your for the father movie? is so pissed at you. The way that he stared at you was a look of parental disapproving. Nope. I haven't seen from him at you since you were seven years old. <laughs> the lemon just was a little. I don't know. I, I generally love lemon pepper, but I didn't love it on popcorn. Mm. So it's one to one. Uh, Stugat. I, and I don't yet. need to hear Stugatz from Stugat. Has not voted, I don't. Right. He has. I want to hear everyone's vote specifically. He, I'm telling you how Stugat is Who's going next? to vote. Tony. So guys, I'm <clears throat> I'm a little torn. Me and Mike back here, very distinguished popcorn uh, con- enthusiasts. Not and true. Mm-hmm. We're looking at certain things, right? Yep. Dan's Dan's popcorn seasoned beautifully. It's there's no much there's no such thing as too much season, mm-hmm. right? Dan seasoned it perfectly. What I like is that there's remnants of the seasoning oh, yeah. in my cup, oh, yeah. which no, which you means can dab it in there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 I love that's the, the hungry man. Yes. I love the I love flavoring it. of Greg's popcorn oh, though. Not really as much good. seasoning. As I would have wanted, I want more lemon pepper dust on my fingers than anything else. Whoa! I think I'm I'm gonna go Dan. Oh wow! 
Could Greg Cody go 0 and 2 in cooking contests? <laughs> Looks like it. He's gonna be mad at you. <laughs> like he's gonna bring this home. He is gonna get, he's gonna take you out of his will. He had your vote locked in. Yours in Stugatz's. He was hoping to get to a to a Kugler vote. And look Bad at Bad day him. for Billy he, not he, to be here for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made the schedule this week in order to <laughs> in order to damper the jury in order to rig the gerrymandering. It was just punishment for what he did to our tournament yesterday. Mike Ryan, would you like to cast a surprising vote in the other direction so that we can send it to Coobs, Coogs and make it more dramatic. I do feel all this pressure to make it more dramatic right now. It's only now. 2 nothing. I right. still have a chance. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. 2-1. You have Stugatz's vote. It's 2-1. Stugatz two hasn't, yeah. voted yeah. Voted. Two <laughs> 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 hasn't voted yet. 2-1. 2-1. Until I hear his vote, he hasn't voted. Okay. Uh, Stugatz, what's your vote? Did Mike vote yet? No, you go ahead. No, you go first. No, I don't, Mike no. already voted. Oh, yeah. He hasn't voted. Oh. He hasn't voted. Somebody vote. It's 1-1 one, one right now? It's 2-1. Two, two, it's 2-0. Two, two, it's 2-1 two, your with yours. It's 2 nothing. who? <laughs> Mike, what's I'm, your vote? I'm I'm really sorry. I'm going to take the drama out of this. Yes. No. I'm, I'm going with Dan. Oh. oh. It's, Three it's no. the best popcorn, and he is my boss. Wow. <laughs> I, I vote Dan, too. <laughs> oh, it's a sweep. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. You gave, oh, it, you gave it a no. run, kid. Wow. Should we go to Coogs? <laughs> you gave it a run. Yeah, the go to money Coogs. Ball. Make it five. The money ball with Coogs. <laughs> you, <laughs> he, your dad is so mad right now, Chris. You gave it a hell of a ride, man. I'm going to go get more. It's just yeah, the seasoning. I'm, I needed more seasoning. I'm having yours right now, but I put Dan's seasoning on top of it. <laughs> Oh, for two. He's so mad at me. And that's without the connector. I would. I, I don't. How much would I have oh. won by if I had used the connector? I don't even want to know, damn. <laughs> Your popcorn is so good. Please, more money, please. I love you, more, Dad. More money for me, please. <laughs> Went for more, huh? Yeah, man. <laughs> popcorn's good. Without the binder, too. I mean, yeah. I got a little, got a little bit on my mustache, a little bit on my microphone. You guys are I crushing that, popcorn. Uh, but you're underestimating how mad Greg Cody is. He's seething, and I can't tell whether it's at his son or all of us, but Greg is proud. He is a very good cook. This is not disputable. He is mm -hmm. a very good cook, but to be 0-2 to us hurts him, and he just he got blowed out. He just got blowed yeah. out. And blowed like, out. Yeah, he got blowed out. It was a route. No doubt about it. See, I don't think my dad would call popcorn or a turkey his specialty. That's true, it, but oh, okay. a loss <laughs> is a loss. Can we get to uh, Chris? But he's a popcorn king. Uh, he did call himself the corn king and Gr Greggy Brackets. He also, if he was a mafioso, he'd be Greggy Brackets. But he is mad now, and he looked at you with disdain, Chris. I don't know. Can you please be honest with us about your anger? Because I don't, I don't want the audience to think this is a bit. Uh, right. During the break, you were seething. I'm surprised and disappointed by the result. I respectfully disagree with it, uh, but I accept it. <laughs> okay. And, and, and what else can I say? I mean, I, you know... I mean that's that's classy in defeat. I mean he, he took he cares about his craft. I appreciate that. Okay. I mean a, a classy seating of the competition while while maintaining your disappointment in it. I like it. It's good stuff. It, it was really good popcorn. It's just yeah, you came from the king. And <laughs> it was a damn good turkey too. You just it was a great turkey. Oh my gosh! Court, just fell short. Like I'm it's telling the you, the greatest turkey I've ever had yeah. to knock you off. Why am I building you up? You're the champ. You're Greg Corny. You don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Corny. It no, is excellent it, popcorn, okay? Yeah, don't, don't, no, I'm no, not no, patronizing I, you. No, I'm no not that Irish yeah. butter. In fact, Greg, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get more of your okay, popcorn. Greg, it's yeah. really good. I mean, it, Can you get me more Dan's while you're out there? It is indisputably good, but you are indisputably angry. And I'm not sure. Can you, can you just be honest with me right now and tell me if there had been no veneer that you had been hiding anything in, you would have said what directly to your son if I had just given you a moment of blanket honesty with no repercussions? Because I saw the way you looked at yeah. him, and it was disdain. Like, it was not only disdain, you felt like you'd been betrayed. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, my look had a little bit of WTF in it. 
It's not a little bit. It was <laughs> you. This is not an act. I know. I know, I have a history with your father, and I know when he's both hurt and angry. And this is a mix. That if I'd had my connector, I'd put them together and I would saw off Chris Cody's head. If if I had, I mean, he poured so, literal salt in the wound to have the loss. Not enough salt, though. To, to, have the, <laughs> to have the loss come because his son, who he's been cooking for all his life, was like, not a fan of the lemon pepper, not enough seasoning. After, you were real loud about telling me that I was using too much seasoning. Yeah, it was over-seasoned. Uh, it was good. I ate this whole cup. It's good popcorn, and and uh, but for me, it's too much seasoning. In hindsight, after the results, do you regret eating all of Dan's popcorn? Because that kind of gave off how good it was. I don't think Greg likes seasoning all that much because he said the same thing about my turkey. Like he said it was Look too salty. Look at all the seasoning left over. In oh Dan's yeah, back. and it's always left over. Like that, I always yeah, have a lot. It's an absurd I, amount. I keep of using it though. I keep reusing it. It's it's wonderful forever because it's already made. So I've got a, a bunch of that at home. Uh, where are you though? You've kind of checked out emotionally on the show. You, it really feels like you're bothered and you want to go home. That's probably accurate. <laughs> yeah, I, on both. So you're going to drive home seething that you lost? No, I mean, Are you going to be saying to yourself, because I'm sorry, to, I want this post-game interview with the, the loser, the gracious loser. Yeah. The gracious loser. With the I, loser. <laughs> Man, that's cold. I want we usually gra- use runner-up or finalist, <laughs> but yeah, please continue with the interview with the loser. The gracious loser. He's We're here give, now with the loser. He's giving us good post-game press conference. At the time of maximum emotion. Can you get over it? Don't worry about me. We're here with uh, loser Jimmy Butler. (laughs) Jimmy, (laughs) you've you've lost in the finals so much. You're a loser. (laughs) What food item? Challenge somebody at a like. What's your food? It's a pork butt, right? Isn't that what you say you do the best? Yeah, but I'm I'm done with this kitchen. No, no, Uh, come on. No, no, no. We're we're done. Over to a man's uh, ego and emotion can only take so much. No, I've retired from the. Uh, Meadowlark Kitchen. Oh, <gasps> as a yeah, loser. It's been a fun run. A gracious loser. Right. He yeah, eats apparently. butt all the time. Yeah. It is on the road, and, and we should afford him that. But, you know, I've had your soup. Your soup's really good. Soup's excellent. You know, you just came for the king. Now, you were known as a turkey king, but then you had a worthy challenger. And even Correct. you admitted yeah. that that was a superior bird. No, Roy made a great turkey. So he, you're, you're willing to admit Roy's was better, but not Dan's popcorn? Is after that losing 4 nothing. Uh For me, you know, it's all a matter of taste, right? <laughs> Literally. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really. for me. Well, you guys said it was about presentation, and it seems like I won on taste. It was, I would say, extremely overseasoned. Wow. For me. Wow. I think it, it's like, I, I, and I could tell in the kitchen when you were just literally like pouring all of that stuff on the corn the corn has to be the star of popcorn and your popcorn does not allow the the corn to have the stage to uh, mostly to itself so you that, do this with not that's where we differ you do this with nachos too he doesn't like a lot of cheese on his nachos no, I he's like the, the chip nacho. wants to be the star i'm exactly. like i got news for you bud the chip is not the star here you know i mean there are some you know when you eat a grilled cheese sandwich you want the 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 toast the the bread and the cheese to marry well. You want to taste both. With popcorn, you want the corn to stand out, and you want the seasoning to be the uh, uh, supporting actor. Uh, Juju, put it on the poll, please. Uh, does the corn want to be the star of the popcorn? Does the chip want to be the star of the nachos? Uh, Tony. Yes. Uh, before we leave here today, and Greg, I'm sorry um, that you are so angry about this. I'm, uh, well, you, you, know. you weren't. You stopped being a gracious loser when you said it was extremely overseasoned. For, for now you're palate. criticizing the winner. No, now you're for cr- my palate, it was extremely overseasoned. And and the this evident, is pretty damning evidence. The evidence <laughs> is in the bag. <laughs> I ex- went to go grab popcorn. Honor, that is Exhibit A <laughs> of my contention. I rest my case. Okay, but Thank I disagree you. with you that the car, that, that the court, and my dad was like pinching a little like I know, <laughs> over I know, his. I know. But how did I win? It's because I know my audience and they're yeah. gluttons and the yeah. mo- excesses. We're Cuban. We have very refined palates. Yeah. Well, speaking of that. Thank you for bringing that up because Tony has now learned that he has a demo 
Tony, who is getting very popular around here with a number of different demos, uh, has is more popular with one demo than all the other demos. Now, you might think, Lecherous Stugat, the way he's been pining for Tony, that that would be the demo. It's sort of like that, but it's older. It's much older, Dan. And what I've realized, guys, is the demo that I kill in my Q rating in this demo is like astronomical. It's Cuban women from 65 to about 85 is a demo that I dominate. Okay, so I had a doctor's appointment and all the ladies that work at my doctor's office are in the demo. 65 to about 70 uh, ladies who take their blood, you know, do all the things that, that the nurses do inside the office. So when I walk in to the doctor's office, I am a superstar. They roll out the red carpet for me. No, no, the Sinta Haven, ven conmigo, ven conmigo. They take me into the back. Como tu estás, tu estás tan grande, tu estás haciendo peso. Oh my grande. God. Grande. Yeah, they're asking me how you're, he's you're so, so big. big. What, what are you so doing? Big. Are they holding your elbow, touching your arm? Of course, because they're, 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 they're feeling, you know, they put the, uh, the stethoscope yeah. to listen to your heartbeat. You won't struggle to find this vein. Exactly right. So I go like this. Qua brazo quiere? Because they were going to take out some. Qua brazo quiere? Because they were going to take some blood for me. And she's like, oh my God, que fuerte tu ta. Mm -hmm. They're, of course, treating me like I found. Flirting with you. Imagine. Yeah. You don't have to spank this Like man. if I'm George Clooney in there, right? So they start taking my blood, Jorge, whatever. Jorge Clooney. So much seasoning <laughs> flew off my hands <laughs> yeah, when I just slapped my know. face, actually. <laughs> it's all trapped under my nails. Now, again, this isn't only at the doctor's office. This is when I go to the bakery, because I go to a bakery, a specific bakery, every Saturday morning. They talk to me like the same way. I just have become a icon in the 60s and 70s <laughs> and, and 80s and Cuban women demographic. I feel like your mom is in that same area where, you know. Yeah, mom loves Whoa. toning. Mom yes. loves toning. Yes, no offense, but I, I do great in the Levitard household. And yeah. <laughs> I have a top five list of names that I get called when I'm either at La Ventanita, oh, at excellent. the, at the, uh, the you know medical establishment that I'm doing stuff at. It's funny. This isn't sexual harassment when Tony's receiving it. No. And old Cuban ladies are giving it. No, no, never. If, if, it, if the show, if the shoes on the other foot though, this would feel all weird. It would. But again, is is you calling it? I don't know the phrase you just used. A medical establishment instead of doctor's office. Is that me referring to the kitchen as the eating area? Yep. Yeah. It's you getting caught up in the air. I got things to say, <laughs> but I got to cram it in. You know. All right. I mean? uh, do you have OLI? I have one OLI. I mean, considering how big he's gotten over the last year, <laughs> medical establishment <laughs> might actually be a stretch for whoever this is. All right. OLI. Uh, what do we have? Mi tesoro. Wow, really? That's OLI. That's OLI. Mi tesoro in English is my treasure. Is this a, <laughs> is this medical establishment by any chance on Bird Road and it's it a, looks like a house? It's, it's off of Bird 57, <laughs> actually, now that you mentioned yeah. it. But a little bit further, closer yeah. to Corway They than got Bird. that whole row of just yeah. shady houses yeah. that, the, the, that got Tony, tax Tony, permits. Tony Bosch Avenue is what it is. <laughs> Number five. Mi corazón. Oh, my heart, man. Yes. My heart. I mean, when, when, when you walk in and say, uh, let me get, you know, dos croquetas, let me get this, let me get, eso es todo, mi corazón. And I'm like, oh, no, I need, I need to buy more. It's, it's, it's also what I say after I have all this sodium. <laughs> um, tesoro, is that treasure? I think of that as jewelry or bobble. Is, I think of it as like a piece of treasure yeah. versus the actual treasure. I feel like I, the way I take it is a treasure chest of things that are just incredible. How do you take it? Number four. Mi rey. Oh, wow. <laughs> my king. Yeah, this is definitely my, a house. My right. king. When I, they're taking my blood, get <laughs> fuerte to tell me, Ray. I'm like, I'm like ladies, like, come king. on. Come on, what do you want me to do? This is a strong list. Number three. Mi amor. Yeah. My love. Yes. I mean, like, come on. Number two. This one is uh, in the lineage of mi rey, but it's something that feels a little bit more personal. Mi, mi príncipe. Whoa. My prince. Wow. When you walk in, that one feels better than King because yeah. I'm like, oh, you still think I'm young? Exactly right, mi príncipe. Like it's amazing. It's also more syllables of affection. The Latin language yeah. is very loving. They thought about that one. We're inefficient. We use a lot of syllables where we could use a few. Number one. Number one. There's nothing better than when you're getting that totada, los huevitos fritos, la colada, whatever, and they Come call me you. That's number one. No. <laughs> they call you mi vida. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, my, my life, my, life. my entire my life. life. You're everything to <laughs> me right list. now. It's an excellent list. It's a great, great list, me Vida. Uh, an excellent effort by both Tony and the loser, ladies and gentlemen. Greg, he Cody. is still seeming. He's so mad. Um, I'm madder now because <laughs> but I, no, I no, just no. tried my own popcorn, and this was an unjust verdict. 
I'm sorry. What happened to the gracious loser? I tried my own Let's hear popcorn. Him out. I'm like ridiculous. Stolen. A ridiculous unanimous judgment against me. This is an insurrection. I'm appealing stop. this decision. This is stop an the insurrection. Count. He will not. He, you can't. You can't say you stop the count when you got blank though. I am appealing <laughs> this decision. You're not. You're. You're not uh, allowing the vote to stand. You are in. Uh, you're against democracy. He That's won correct. by a lot. 